last I'm just going to go up for 20 seconds and grab some aspirin. It's not innovative. It's not thought-provoking. Get a real guy on. Do a real show. Get the fuck on. Then don't do it. There's a masturbatory factor in there. He asked Fred, so when's the last time you had sex with your wife? And there was a long fucking pause. A long Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our latest edition of Radio Gunk. It is Monique. I am here with Dennis and Bon Jovial and Vandra Sternhard, which would be John, (laughs) with a very good connection this time. And today we are going to be reviewing the art of Howard Stern and how he has gone from, you know, master doodler to actual, you know, artist in residence in the Hamptons and... And I have an article that I, I'm loving and I'm wanting to read to you guys about what a pompous fucking douchebag he has become when it comes to his artwork. So we're really looking forward to doing that for you tonight. But what we decided to start the show with was, and we just talked about it for the last like 10 minutes about what we should do within this show. Um, not that we have time constraints, but it does get a little bit kind of laggy. And then all of a sudden, none of us are interested in anything except for John. And, um, and, and <laughs> <laughs> to, no, you always, a little bus. jab. You're, you're, no, I, the minutia. No. You're Straight passionate. Who you're passionate from beginning to end. Uh, I start to wane about two and a half because hours you're, in because you're multitasking, and I think yes, your brain gets and I fried. start. I and I don't want to do it anymore, and then I get bored, and then I don't care about the subject matter. So yeah. we decided we're going to do an entirely different show, just focused in on all of the articles that have been coming out about Howard and, you know, basically ripping him a new asshole without canceling him is, is what's happening. I think. Um, So I think this will be a really, really good show, but we'll, we'll wait on that for a hot moment. And by the way, can I just really quick, I'm sorry to interrupt. Matt from the, Matt from the mini fan or buddy, Matt. um, I want to know if you're in there, if you could tell, and even if it's later on, is Maureen Callahan, who wrote the post piece, is she related to Jerry Callahan, the guy who you do uh, uh, prank calls for? I believe I read something that claims they're related. So um, that would be an that. easy thing for you to have just tweeted him. I don't know. No, um, it, just, it just hit me. I meant to ask him that two weeks ago, and I okay. got... Uh, all right, I just want you to know that Matt also did a Who's Your Favorite Co-host on Radio Gunk Thing, which I did not Uh-oh. participate in Grace, because I do not Grace. I do not believe Ooh, in in so highlighting hard. out people no. and calling out <laughs> people and doing anything who like won? that. Who who won? Who won? I don't know who won. I never even I went did. into the, the thread. Exactly. And the only Grace, reason Grace, yes, you the do. only reason yes, I do. know that you um that you know about it is because don't, you don't PM me. It. No. <laughs> Yeah. Bastard! Um, uh, I, I won. You know what? You're just you're just the new flavor of the week. You're like the That's you know exactly. You're like uh, the wet walnuts and whipped cream on top of the ice cream that is our Napoleon. Okay, I, so I won. I won it. I, so, I won. so so I just want to let everybody know that Sizzle Chest sixty nine <laughs> is in the house. Oh, is, you're kidding! Really Six sizzle, sizzle chest is there. <laughs> Are you kidding? Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle chest? No, I would, I would not. I cannot make that up. I saw the name. I, I, I <laughs> but, just had to point that out because. It but isn't made me that happy. just? But isn't that just so? Isn't that so? Sizzle chest to just leave exactly. them on more, more to go <laughs> exactly. away for four oh, shows months. and then come back. Yeah, he, he went, I don't know. Maybe he's in sizzle, jail. Sizzle chest sixty nine. All much <laughs> you waiting for more and wanting more. <laughs> You know, it would it would just fucking kill me to find out that's like Xavier or something. Like that would just fucking kill me. I, I doubt it. He's never mentioned it, but it would be fucking hysterical. Well, I have a theory that Xavier is actually your husband because that oh, would make so that's interesting. Much sense I, I you know what to share in your life and yeah, packed. We will never reveal this. Yeah, no, so, that would be amazing if that if true. But yeah, no, that's actually. You know, he's uh, he's three thousand miles away. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> ste- stepping out in San Diego. I don't even. I don't think Joe Jackson would do that. <laughs> Joe Jackson, <laughs> no. But is he in love with you though? Like Robin Howard? 
Uh, oh, Robin geez, Matt, Howard. I've got a feeling. I know he, he listens. He barely so Xavier, likes get me. Get in the chat. Blobbin. He, bar he barely wait, likes me. Seriously. Wait, 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 when we address something with the Blobbin and Howard, Blobbin was dancing on a picture of Howard when they were at WNBC. She was so angry at him. She fucking <laughs> just took pictures of him and stomped on him every really? fucking day. Yeah. Jesus he was, Christ. She, she She's got saying, issues. She I, knew he didn't think? love her. He, that's because she knew he didn't love her back. Uh. <laughs> so let's discuss. Let's discuss what's been going on with the show because I love oh, when you God. guys call me into the morning Jesus. thread and you're like, "Oh my God, we can't listen to this anymore, Monique. Please help!" And I it's so to funny to me. Shut the servers down so we. Can <laughs> Come on, give I'm gonna have PTSD from this shit. Please, I listened I to that whole show yesterday. Terrible show. Oh I have God. to tell you, oh my God, my soul hurts. Soul crushing. Nothing puts me to sleep <laughs> quicker. Then listening to this drop it, right? Am I right? Did you, do you feel yourself getting stupider? I'm not, yeah, no hyperbole. Yes. IQ he doesn't care things. anymore. He yep. doesn't care anymore. He my suicide he, note. You know, he can't, <laughs> me, he can't. The thing is, Howard can't get any stupider, so it doesn't hurt him. Yeah, yeah I know. That 79 IQ is coming in full force. <laughs> really All right, is, so what we did really want to start with is a, I'm going to get into the show um, just a little bit. Hold on, let we me are? share screen. Just a little, just a little. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Tiger Lily. What did she say? Oh, good. <laughs> Lexa Sandra Bernhard singing. Uh, I think we should end the show with a Sandra Bernhard song. Oh, her oh, singing is that. let's stop so the show funny. With it. Do it now. She's so earnest. She sang Barracuda at the Jerry Stiller Roast. It's, and I think she does a lot of covers. She's so unintended. She, she likes it. She's so Cover passionate. lover. She's so it's earnest. Skew effect. That's what makes it so fun. <laughs> okay. Can, can, can I start now? No. Maybe. Sizzle Chess right. hasn't written anything. He's, yeah, he's I don't believe you that Sizzle Chess is in the house. Unless, oh is. my God, is Sizzle Chess your wife, Dennis? <laughs> <laughs> She misses her husband. That would be amazing. <laughs> she wants her husband back. It just, it just dawned on me that that would be phenomenal. They only communicate in the chat thread. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't know, know, you know how close to reality you are on that <laughs> one. Yeah, it's the only time we talk. <laughs> oh. I, hang on one second. I really want to do this, but I can't find my readers. That's really Jillian <laughs> Barbary singing Lad Side's really good. That's a great, that's a great compare. Oh, that's so funny. Remember that? <laughs> Jillian no, 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 I don't. At I don't, the, uh, I at the birthday it. bash. I, I try to put that whole thing out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> that whole, that whole event. <laughs> Carrie Puffin and his Jillian Barbary obsession is the best. Well, I mean, she was really he hot. Was. Took my love <laughs> and you took it down. All right, here we go. We're going to start our show now. So, um, How would Lisa C37 did a thread where we were talking about crazy days and nights. And here is the blind. There is an actress, comedian, radio host who we used to also write who used to also write books. She hasn't done so in a very long time. It has been a couple of decades. About five or six years ago, she was thinking of new ways to bring in income and decided she would write another book. In that book, she was going to recount some stories about this permanent A plus list DJ who no longer is on his A game. The stories would have included the definitive account of whether his first date with someone special to him was, in fact, the date bailing on her paying client to have a chance with the DJ. It would also have told some other tales that have been speculation in the past. She was dissuaded by not only the people of the DJ, but also a late night talk show host. You know who won't be dissuaded, though? That's someone special to him who already has a manuscript ready to go whenever the split happens. So by reading that, and okay, yes, so we all deduced that it was Sandra Bernhardt, Jimmy Kimmel, Howard Stern, Beth. Yep. Absolutely. But are we the late night host could be, the late night host could be <laughs> Andy Cohen. Because she works no, on it's, 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 and it's, he, it's, he it's, does that What's Happening live show, which is a late night show. Uh, but I don't him. think a Cohen is a late night host. I really what don't. What connection does Kimmel have with... Sandra. Jimbo Kimball knows all these people. Jimbo, Jimbo Kimball is six degrees of separation from all yeah. these assholes. Yeah. But yeah, what, what does Andy Cohen have a relationship with Sandra Bernhardt? I mean, same exactly. difference. Because she was on his channel and she got but he's not a, whacked. 
she she so, had an hour show at noon, which I called and I will play. I send you that audio uh, to 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 compliment this. And <clears throat> her show got whacked in the vein of Jenny McCarthy and Cavino and Rich but, and and fucking Jason Ellis. So, and I think she's got an axe to grind. Well, no, but uh, Andy Cohen's not a late night host by any stretch of the imagination. He is though, Dennis. He has a show. Not really. I, I don't. I don't think of him as I, most America okay, doesn't think but, him. Jimmy listen, Kimmel is. You guys can agree to disagree. It could be either one of them. Who even gives a shit? The point is, right, it's in her heart. <clears throat> you know. But what I'm uh, curious about is the that someone special to him already has a manuscript ready to go whenever the split happens. I can't imagine Beth being able to you know, <laughs> comprehensively put together a <laughs> manuscript of her fucking life with Howard. Like, I don't see that happening at all. She doesn't honestly. have much else to yeah, do. Though, so. Yeah, but she wouldn't do that because then she wouldn't get the money. There's no way she would do that. There's just no way. And there's no I way he would allow her to with the prenup maybe, or maybe, anything like that. Maybe it's dictating. It could be dictating it. Dear, yes. uh, if it could figure out how to work it, how to work the equipment, uh, you know, right. dear oh, Dennis, it's, it's just a personal <laughs> journal and it'll be great to read. <laughs> I think I think even we underestimate how many times a day she Googles herself and Howard. Even us, even we who call her out every which way. I think we don't even I think she Googles herself three times more than even we think. And I think she read this oh, out loud. It, she can't read it out loud. She wanted Monique to read it for her. Hey, and, which uh, I just did. So you're word. welcome. Yes, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> read, by the way. Well, read. It has Google alerts that are probably going off all day long. I mean, it's, we have it's no obviously. idea. Yep. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what goes on with her, but I do want to play Not some much. of the supporting uh supporting documentation. Supporting to... documentation. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, Johnny sent me a bunch of stuff. Which one do you I want me to start with, John? Two, uh, well, I got I got two. So the, everybody obsesses over this one clip, and that's what sent me down another rabbit hole. But <clears throat> I'll get to that. So this is from 2002. Sandra Bernhardt, who was regularly doing the show at the time, she used to, as a lot of uh, people who are devotees of the 90s, she used to be a very regular guest in the vein of Belzer, and she would do the news, and she was a con and now she was a guest at this point. She 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 comes on in 2002, and she hears tales about Beth. And Howard's giving like lesbian, uh, you know, just the 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 the. the, the oh, look at look at what Andrew Rupert Pumpkin just wrote. Per IMDb, Sandra Bernhard was a guest on Jimmy Kimmel Live in 2004 and 2005. Yeah, that's a long time. That's fucking 16 years ago. Well, this whole fucking she's, story she's is Howard's is since. 20 yeah, years yeah. ago. She's been, Howard's, <laughs> she's been on Howard since then. But this so, but this clip is from O2, and it is her uh, kind of just volleying back gossip she's heard about Beth. And this is uh, the thing we, we, we all hear about and obsess over that, the clip that's gotten that. So I found, I isolated it, and this is the clip. All right, hang on. Let me get it there. It says, uh, I, what's I get it. 2002. Um, yes, that's it. Yep. Sandra Beth Hart, 2002. All right, I'm going to let these clips play because, you know, sometimes when I play them on here, it kind of goes back to the beginning. So I'll just play yes. it in its entirety, and then we'll come back and talk about it on the other side. Okay, okay here we go. Please hang. Anything's happened for discussion. <laughs> She'll bring a guy to... to uh... You like to do that, huh? <laughs> Bring a guy what? Robin, Bring a guy out. to what? You're getting all turned on. Bring everybody. me into this. She'll do that. I called you to bring you into the equation. And oh, you, you, know, you brought me into nothing. Available. Oh. And now See what you, you, now you have a girlfriend? I have a girlfriend. Two years I got a girlfriend. Well, you haven't been here in a long time. The last time you were here, you were inviting Howard over to that fashion thing. Yeah, I did, that did husband. me a lot of good. Two years? Yeah. yeah. You've been going out with this chick for two years yeah. now? Yeah. Who Met at Shabbat dinner. Who is she? Met at Shabbat dinner. Ah, that's brilliant. Who is she? She's only the love of your life. She's Beth. Beth. Now, wait a minute. I know somebody who knows Beth, but... Who is I'm it? I'm trying to think who it is. Somebody who went to school with her or something. I well, we didn't hear oh, anything weird, I hope. <laughs> no, 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 that's gonna be weird. I can't remember now, but it's 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 one of those weird stories. Like, I think she always wanted to be with somebody famous. Was the story. <gasps> oh, stop. Wow. Oh. Wow. Wow. really? Yes. Really? Oh, you're too funny. So keep your uh, eye peeled, honey. You did not hear that. <laughs> you are such a liar. I am not a liar. <laughs> All right, tell me what you heard. 
That's what I heard, but I'm try I cannot remember who told uh, me. Oh. Was wow. it a guy named Eddie? <laughs> no. no? All right. Was it that uh, uh, Ted Kennedy? Run? What? No, 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 no. So what's 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 she, what's she up? She had an ex boyfriend who was in show business. Oh really? Yeah, but not you not know. your branch of show business. Not, yeah, not, not the, the fabulous branch of show See, she knows. She knows that the boyfriend was like a fucking Broadway guy. She knows this. She knows it. I know. She said she was a beard beard for him too. She kinda caught herself a little bit. She just yeah. stopped herself. Just oh, a tit hair so because she knew that, that that Howard was going to be a little bit upset. All right, let me just finish. Me. <laughs> Not the <laughs> superstar no, that I enjoyed. No, it was uh, mediocre. <laughs> mediocre show business. He yeah. was in. He was a lighting guy, I think. What did you, what'd you do with your uh, girls on um, Father's Day? They come over, hang out with you. Had a uh, had them all in with my parents. We had a little brunch nice. over at uh, Ocean. Listen to this. Oh, very nice. Very beautiful brunch. Lovely. Uh, it was very emotional. No, the question uh, is, is what cool, is it cool with the girls and the girlfriend? Yeah, it is. Right. I mean, yeah, they're okay that's with it. They're L. able to uh, that's enjoy L. time with me and her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but the question helpful. is, what does Sandra do with the girl on Father's Day? Yeah. What'd you do? And what the hell was going on in your place on Father's Day? <laughs> I just came back from being on the road, so we just hung out. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Don't say that. First. Okay. So, yeah, that is the classic Sandra Bernhardt clip yep. where we have all speculated from there yep. until today. About Even though it didn't exist, you know, it's it's very much a needle in a haystack. By the way, thanks to Steve S. and Boff for a lot of this. I just want to pre, but Steve S. lent me down. The 2002 year, and one was the hardest years to fight. They are, mm -hmm. he, it, he's on an Alice and Smear campaign, and shit like that is all over it. So those those years were kind of scrubbed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I can't I, find that. I've got them that, yeah, yeah, So I was able all. to get retrieve yeah. that, and. uh the and the next clip, Monique, is I don't know how I found this. So by I guess by accident, I don't know what made me go to Alec Baldwin's on the show in the same year. And he does a phoner and he is very much like Sandra Bernard in the New York celebrity scene. They know the gossip columnists, they know the dirt, they hear things that and Howard's chiding him about his weird dating life. He's like, he had, he was dating, um, what's her name from Sex and the City? Charlotte. Oh, God damn it. Kristen Davis. So he dated her for two months, and there was a Jennifer Love Hewitt rumor. Howard's drilling him on that, and then Alec turns the tables on him because when you go on Howard's show back then, it's like, you bring your own ammunition in case you got to turn it to, and Baldwin was well aware of it, so he did this to Howard here. And take a looky at what he says. Take a listen to what he says. Okay, which clip is this? Alec Baldwin it calls Beth Yes. Mm -hmm. Straight up. Okay, here we go. Hang on. I think I'm having a little internet issue. Not going to lie. Oh, if see? He scored. Mm -hmm. if he scored Jennifer Love Hewitt. <laughs> now, if you had used my oh. ugly equipment. <laughs> you know that Jennifer Love Hewitt? Jennifer Love Hewitt wouldn't give me the day. I know you're lying. I'm she wouldn't give man. you the time I'm of an day. old man for her. <laughs> no, old. you're not. Come on. She I asked her and she said, go to hell. She said, go away. How old is she? She said, you disgust me. How old is Jennifer? She's like 21. You wouldn't date a 21 year old? Of course I would. <laughs> of course. I know. <laughs> I mean, date him. He asked her. I date a 17 year old. I don't care. Really? Uh, the Sex in the City chick, because I saw pictures of you kissing her in the past. Uh huh. You saw those pictures of I did. I did. <laughs> the pictures don't lie. <laughs> I tell you, how's your single life, Howard? Oh, I'm I'm dating. I have dating. a I have, have a, a steady girlfriend. I have a steady girlfriend. girlfriend. You have a steady girlfriend. What's she do? She's Where'd a model. Where'd you meet her at the mansion? Where'd you meet her? No, 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 no. What I'm going to tell you something. I met her at a dinner party. Gracie man. You know what was that like? It was very uh, romantic. It was really there was romance in the air right away. The air was no. kind of crackling with romance right away. I uh, was there. I was uh, eating my dinner. I was invited to a dinner party, and she was there. We started talking. Well, she was an escort with another guy there. Actually, oh, she, oh, dare you? He, what are you saying? Now? Why are you putting me down? You I'm only trying. Hours? I'm only okay, trying I'm to tell you my. Oh, we're going the sincerity route here. Okay, you got to. You got to. <laughs> are you trying to say me, that I date hookers? Let's forgive me. Let's, let's forgive me. Let's start again. Are now, you tell saying, us all about this magical moment, saying, Howard? What you happened? You took your girlfriend out of the light. Ask your brother. He met my girlfriend. You know. Eddie, you, no, no, what does your girlfriend do for a living? She's a model. She's a model. Yeah. I see. And 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 how long you been dating her? Uh, it's been about three months. No. Yeah. That long. Yeah. Would you, would you? How many times have you been married, Howard? Once. Really, would you ever get married again? No. How about you? Would you never Alan? get married. Never. Again. What about you? I would never get married. I would rather. 
be thrown into a fiery volcano. Never be there. Me too. Wow. Let me tell you something. And listen, I. Is that the breeder with 700 fucking kids talking yeah, right exactly. now? Yeah, that's O2. You, you, you know what? 19 years before. Well, you know what's so great, though, listening to this, this this clip and how wonderful his life is and how absolutely, utterly miserable his fucking life is now. It is I love so it. Great. It's just so it's so awesome. It's but he's I love awesome. everything about how how Alec <laughs> Alec's Fuck life has life. turned up. <laughs> the contempt he had for Howard. You oh yeah, hear it in his voice. He 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 was on to Howard. You know, we weren't. He in came that loaded mindset. for Bear Bond Jovial. He came loaded. He mm-hmm. knew absolutely. I'm gonna get this gossip stuff. That's all the Richard Johnson feud he had, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna lob this cruise missile right back at him because he knows. And shit. Howard thinks he's you don't just friend, say that. You know? Listen to how he worded <laughs> he that. Knew, he it's knew exactly. He knew. Exactly. He, he absolutely knew. <laughs> this is the one of the best clips I've ever heard. Well, well done. I as I always say to Johnny reason. comes well, in John, it, like a quarterback a... and just yeah, that's a home run. Yeah, you do this. <laughs> couple different sports like... going on there. But um <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, don't know. Australian football, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no, that's a goal yeah. in Australia. Come so on. So the you know, the thing is Alec, you know, is you know, he's a celebrity in New York, so he's in the know of all the party girls because well who else party girls are going to go for except rich guys. And, you know, I, I just love how he just brought that up. He knew exactly who it was. It's just, the I best agree. Part I love it. And I believe, Absolutely. I believe that if like a Jerry Seinfeld was on the show at that time period too, he would have thrown that out too. there too. He oh, would have yeah. done the exact yep. same thing. Cause Jerry doesn't give a fuck about who he, he skewers when he talks about uh, things. But yeah, I agree. I think that, you know, everybody's got to know that the wealthy, kind of really unattractive man is only going to bag a fucking model if she's a, you know, pay-per-view girl. That's really the, the bottom line, you know? That's who she was. And you know what? I really, really believe we have to really dig much, much deeper into that thing. I don't recall what Cabby's whole conversation was about how he, when he met Beth, and I feel like we need to go back to that. Yeah, there's, there, I remember, it's been so long, but Cabby had, like, details i mean literally the details of that you know uh, the party girl details right i think he was hanging in that circle also he was there that night and so uh, the fact that howard completely like forgets about that and now all of a sudden it's just him and ralph and him coming back all sad on mother's day for this fucking dinner is you know that's all new revisionist history now think think about this for a second and what in what universe does crazy cabbie go to the same dinner party as howard i mean really seriously that's not even like the same because sport. Here's, here's what I, I would connect it like you remember that guy booker yeah i remember booker and he was dating jennifer lopez's uh sister sister right so yeah. they were all djs on k-rock and kane and cabbie and booker and it was that kind of circle jerk and they weaseled their way into hanging out with howard through cabbie was kind of like stalking him he Howard had the, the hallway instituted thing because of Cabby the first time, <laughs> way back. That was he's the first, yeah. And yeah, so it, it's not hard to think that he wouldn't be able to just stalk his way into it through those guys. But, I don't know, but, you know, it's very curious to me. And do you remember John at all when we had him on the show? Like, mm-hmm. I know we brought it up as a part of the conversation. He was ducking it, he was, he was, he was nebulous, yeah. And he yeah. was, yeah, nebulous. I, I don't remember. know why. Oh, I don't, he, he's, he's, he's a paraplegic now so, oh shit i know i know so so here we go classic sizzle chest maybe they were both at the racetrack yeah sizzle chest we do love coming. your name yeah i know god you know? yeah and nibbler well, nibbler um, the john I uh, I like Alec too. I always have. Can you shave my back for me? <laughs> All right. What other? There. While we're at it, what oh. other clips from this little foursome that you All right, sent so, me? Uh, so knowing this, we on our on the Radio Gunk forums, the Sandra Bernhard thing came up like two years ago, and I just remember seeing she had a show on Andy Cohen's network. So I decided to, well, you did Vanya calls up 
uh, Sandra Bernhard <laughs> on her own show. And I started to ask her because she was actually on, you know, we, we did the, the birthday bash. She was, she somehow finagled her way into the birthday bash. And that's the last time they were ever, mm-hmm. how she did that. Who knows? Andy Cohen, she was at Sirius. She, whatever. They weren't right. She whatever. Somehow found her way into that. It wasn't like, yeah, her list. But, but we're there, really so. still talking about the birthday bash where they were giving tickets out on the street. Right. So right. it's not like it was the most coveted fucking right. ticket known to mankind right. as we, as we so, found out. So the clip is so a die Bernhard. Yeah. So she, maybe Sandra, Sandra had <laughs> one of her producers call blindsided Howard and asked him why, She's not on the show anymore. And we were all like, what is going on? Like they, you know, since the birthday bash, they had no. So I called her to see what was up with their relationship and just kind of get an update. Okay, here we go. Okay, everybody in Reading, get back to me. Um, Vanya in (laughs) Florida. (laughs) Sandra, how are you? I've admired you for years. I mean. Nothing makes me laugh more than the Johnny Depp that you call into these shows with. <laughs> the fact that? that you use Vanya, which many people have no idea. Your inside this jokes are so fucking ridiculous time. that it just kills me. <laughs> because John knows God. that when I used to do like um, summer theater, Off I was in right. Uncle Vanya. And so he calls himself <laughs> Vanya. <laughs> It's a cool That's fake obscure. name, isn't it? That is really it's great. It's, it's, it is a great fake name, right? It's such a great it's, fake it's name. It's delicious. It's delicious. And I, I never ever think you get the credit for being the female comedian uh, pioneer that you are. You never ever get enough credit, and it's kind of seeping into other areas. I wanted to ask you, Sandra. I had heard um, weeks ago. I think a friend of yours had called the Stern Show and sort of asked Howard why you haven't done his show in so long. And he sort of like, he really, really sort of danced around it. And I know he has this crazy hallway protocol, you know, where he has like, you know, SEAL team, sex security, you know, walking into the elevator and stuff. And I find that the show is lacking sort of your swagger and that sort of comedic, oh. uh, how do I put this? Um, Je ne sais quoi. I'm sorry. Ooh. Je ne sais quoi. Is that, what, is that what you're looking for? You know, you know what? You know what? I'd leave it to you to sort of upset <laughs> anything I was going to say. Jenna said, <laughs> <"Glad we're not." laughs> I, last time uh, Dennis Miller was funny. He used that word. But oh, that's oh my God. I'm sorry. I said that's funny and, that's and surprising. Funny. And I'd, I'd heard things about his mysteriousness that he sort of when he walks to this sort of freight elevator, he has these sort of hair, you know, plugs and sort of extensions put on. You need like, you know, Tom Hanks's <laughs> telescope to see his scalp these days. Why has he not reached out to you? Why is it? Is it? Didn't you have a thing where he reached out to you to go to temple or something because he was pretending to be spiritual for 15 minutes? And- no, no, I was, I was staying with him and he wanted to go with me to Shabbat and we went and we had a lovely time and I don't know. She was staying with him? Oh, yeah, that's weird. This what year was so that from, good. Dennis? Like 2007? When yeah. she, was, she was staying with him? Yeah. Yeah. She, she, it was the early series years. She somehow was staying with him. He, he reached out to her about a problem. He was having some, who, which to this day we don't know what it was. And then yeah, she took it, him to Temple what the we know nothing, babe. We know we know nothing bizarre. of what you no, speak no, I, of. No, I, no, I, I can find that's exactly what happened. That, that's, that's a very I faint memory. To go. Uh, I believe you, but I'm just. Isn't why would he I'm need? To, why would he want her in his house? Uh, uh, the details are hazy well, here. Like she I was a celebrity. He wasn't as, he, he wasn't as star fucky at that time. Like oh, se- the early well. series years, he was still hanging with B listers, and he hadn't the, the the Marcy hooks weren't in him yet. So he yeah, would hang out yeah. with someone like her. Maybe she was. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't. I'm gonna know. finish. I'm gonna finish. No, it's, yeah. I'm. I have no idea why I haven't been back on the show. I, I mean, I thought, and I no thought idea. that was gonna trigger. And I thought that was gonna trigger you being. I mean, forget the days where you would sit in for like entire. And that's just what the show. What if you listen to the show now? He's literally really dallying, and it's this bath. It's his perpetual sort of sexually sexually harasses his male staff and it's like a bathhouse in there and <laughs> what the show needs is like you said oh. you're 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 sandra wow and <laughs> sandra what there's this other thing what, what was his wife beth 
she was kind of one of those people sort of, as it were, on the scene where, you know, you would sort of troll the, uh, you know, the, the Soho Grand Hotels and these places and sort of look for rich guy in the, in the vein of Katie Lee Joel. What was, what was his wife's history, say, sort of pre- I'm, I didn't know Beth before. Yeah, I, I, I back never pedal. Met Beth. Oh. She's been very back sweet. She's a, she's a sweet person. And people, you know, I think people just feel comfortable with, you know, whatever makes them, you know, kind of click. I, it, we don't know. We, who knows what that is? And, what? you know, anyway, it's all cool. I'm cool with Howard. And you know what? The great thing is I have my own platform now. And I get to do what I want to do on my terms. And that's that's what we love to do. And I'm so glad that you called me. And thank you for your support and your adoration, my darling, Vanya. And we'll, we'll talk again. <laughs> thank you. Oh, that's, that's incredible call. Wow. You have these up your sleeves. That's incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Every once in a while, you got to... Uh, dive in and see what's out there. When she had a show, I thought we were, it was a missed opportunity to not ask her about that. And I just realized she had one and uh, I'd always wanted to get her. On, and there was a thread on the gunk thing. And I'm like, we gotta, we gotta ask her. And you know, she's not on anymore. Oh, she's, her show went she, the way when of was Covino she... and Rich. Mm -hmm. I think in the last six months, Earlier. she whacked it. Oh, mm, interesting. Sure. I didn't know that. I, I looked on the serious schedule. She's not. She did an interview with Andy Cohen f about the Paul Mooney death today, I think. Yeah, it happened today. So, yeah. It's crazy. It's a weird coincidence. All right. Well, I'm going to save the hair clip for later oh. because, oh. well. Oh. 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 I hyped it so much. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right, can you can you build it up so we can get to the okay. fucking art well, thing? Oh, so you're asking him to build it up? I've been looking for this for eight years. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, yeah. I'm not embellishing. I've been looking. I heard uh, an Opie and Anthony clip <laughs> where they kept. This is when, like. I'm going to go get a snack. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Opie, for a number of times, has been threatening to release his hair information about Howard. And um, I found this clip and I kind of go, and I remembered in the early days of 06 when Howard first signed with Sirius, they were on XM, direct competitors. It's the, one of the only times where they weren't controlled by a mutual Howard boss. And I remember wanting to really sift through these shows in early, where Opie and Anthony were going on, just releasing tons of dirt, just unfiltered and no boss telling them what to say. And there's no ratings. They're not on FM. They're not, they're not Steve Kingston. They don't have Mel Karmas and telling them what to do. And I go through and I'm sifting through and I get to March of 2006 and I find this hair threat that Opie has been using like recently. And he won't say it. He's afraid. To, well, not, I mean, when he was on, uh, serious stuff. When they were still on, he would threaten to use this, and he he was afraid. To, and so he launches into this thing. I find it, and it's off an article, and it's uh, they're going back and forth, and they're trying to dissuade people. And it's that huge feud. They're on XM. He's on Sirius. All the ballyhooed about Howard uh, starting new at Sirius, and it's the the new thing, and every the shiny new thing, and everybody's subscribing to Howard, and they're trying everything they can to dissuade people from doing it. And so they're uh, unleashing all the dirt they have, and this is what I found. Okay, that's a great build up. Here we go. There he is. There's one of his boys. Go to Fred in Brooklyn. Fred? Well, please allow me to bring up Howard Boyce. Hey, uh, um, the Lloyd Grove article today in uh, the Daily News. Tell him, I got Fred. A big from Brooklyn. Out of that guy. <laughs> well, you guys got great comments there. <laughs> great comments. <laughs> you know what? We gave him some, we did give him some great quotes, but. Uh, I got to tell you, I think the people are very scared in the gossip columns of the newspapers. I think ha I think Howard has been controlling those people for many, many years. Yeah. Because we gave uh, good old Lloyd or whatever his name is gold. Oh, gold. yeah. Gold. He talked to Anthony and I for like 10, 15 minutes. Anthony and we had him and me. laughing really hard on the phone. Yeah. And uh, all he writes in That's his article about Stern wearing a wig. Mm -hmm. This has been reported for many years, by the way. Uh, do, does luxuriantly locked Sirius Satellite Radio jock Howard Stern wear a wig? Rival Michael Savage of WOR raises the issue in his upcoming book, The Political Zoo, out April 18th. It is alleged that his mane is a wig. 
that beneath it all, without the hairpiece, Stern looks like a dentist from the Bronx circa 1945. <laughs> he sells condoms on the side, claims Savage. XM's radios, XM Rithany. Now, remember, we talked to him for 15 minutes and had him laughing really hard. Yeah. He goes, oh, my God, that's great, as he's typing. So we know we're giving him good stuff. Oh, my God, you're kidding. Oh. Laugh, <laughs> laughing, typing, guy. <laughs> so after all that, we're feeling pretty good about ourselves because it is war. Mm -hmm. Uh, he writes, XM Radio's Opie and Anthony, meanwhile, told me they have long suspected that Stern has hair plugs. No comment from the Stern camp. That's it. That's all he got. Wow. That was wow. it? Which proves to me he was way too scared to print what we gave him. Oh, yeah. He was and, petrified. And I think Howard controls these guys. I really do. I really wasn't, do. Wasn't Howard all over Lloyd drove for something a couple of years ago that... Uh... He was panning him that he was uh, not printing something properly. I, he should be open and, and, and print what you guys say rather than... This, uh, is, what, this is what we told him. Here we, and we got to be go. very careful about this. When we were working for the same company, you know, Anthony and I would meet with uh, clients all the time. Yes. Sometimes a couple hours a day, we just had to meet with uh, potential clients that wanted to hey, advertise. The latest radio Dick show. Cream wants to uh, advertise, but they want to meet you guys up in the conference room. All right. Hey, this is a pill that you take and uh, your metabolism goes through the roof. Uh, they want to advertise. Right. Hey, this guy wants to come. So we had this uh, guy that uh, was a, uh, a hair uh, plug guy. Or hair replacement. Hair replacement. Well, there was a few that I met. It was yeah. actually a lady. Ah, it was right. a lady. Yeah. You're talking about the dude from Philly. Yeah. Who wanted to, like, take away man boobs. And he looked at Anthony and I and said, well, we do, uh, we do hair plugs, too. But you guys are doing just fine. So that sucks. Yeah, he wanted everybody to uh, get uh, plugs and boobs, <laughs> fat sucked. And <laughs> anyway, so we met with a um, another hair replacement company, mm -hmm. and uh, this was told to us. Mm -hmm. This was definitely told to us. To us. Uh, they were coming to aboard, us. thinking about coming aboard. Wow. And uh, they said that uh, Howard actually was a client. Yeah. They told us that. Wow. Can I prove that? No. And I'm going on the radio right now. I cannot prove that. Prove it. But this was told to us behind closed doors it, uh, at a huge conference table. Mm -hmm. Huge. And the huge. company was so bummed out because like, he looks so freaking good with what we did for him. But he will not admit this ever. He, uh, but if he did, the endorsement we would get would be just unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Everybody would be running to my uh, office to get their, their problem taken care of. That was told to us. Now, I don't know if this person had a beef with Howard and decided to, like, stir the pot. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. But obviously, the paper didn't want to print that. <laughs> no. So we told that story uh, to Lloyd or whatever his name is. And he was like, oh, my God. Oh, this is cold. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So, yeah. I love that. Those guys are <laughs> dickheads, though, aren't they? Yeah, that, that, that's, a tough, that's a tough listen. That's a tough listen. They're good information. They are. Jesus. Oof, They're uh, going after him at a time when nobody else would he, love him or hate him. They were trolling him before, and they were on to him. And they, Opie, during this time, had released the the, uh, the Fridays off before anybody knew about mm -hmm. it. So hate him or not, they were trolling him and they were calling him out on stuff that took us a few years to, to catch on. And that's, you know, that's one of them. Props, that thing yeah, never caught yeah. any track. Nobody caught it. Nobody's listening to him. They're on a, the total wasteland at XM in those years. Howard had signed with Sirius, so he diverted them. They weren't on, and they went to FM. They they, they took David Lee Roth's place to, you know, mm -hmm. so they would get that FM audience back. But that's uh, that he refused to tell that story after that. He the for whatever reason, that's the only time he was able to get that out there. <laughs> that nice. their their clients. Uh, and who was the one who said that Howard's picture was on the wall of a hair a a wig Chauncey company? Pharrell, Chauncey. Pharrell. Oh. The Pharrell it's hair system. Great. Uh, it's great. Why didn't they take a photo of it? But they have when they when they were at WNEW, they had all the same, you know, advertisers and mutual people and shit. And they're hearing stuff. And they weren't allowed to say it then. And that was the little window where they were allowed to say whatever the hell they wanted to. All right. Little, well, there you go. Well, there there you go. There's, there's a little conversation about the wig, completely the wig. A, a, out of out of context for what we're doing tonight. But we are, in fact, going well, to start our uh, critical well, assessment. 
that that I'll wig is like is that wig <laughs> is like artwork there i mean it really is a piece of art i mean honest <laughs> to god because that's not natural it's 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 like it's a, it's abstract art um yeah you know, it's that that wiggy the perfectly every curl perfectly manicured it's just perfect if you if you have the money he has you're gonna have you yeah, know you're gonna be able to you can go swimming in it and you can, you can make it look like as good twirling. <laughs> <laughs> and so when he does That's those sweet. tests, like when he's on uh, Piers Morgan and he goes, tug it, tug it, tug it. You can put your hair in. It's fake. And then and the straps and the like, and netting underneath. How much It's a do you system. Need? And you know what? I was right. recalling today, um, you know, because somebody has a thread about it on the forum. Um, at radiogunk.com if you guys aren't there, but it was a thing about the wig and to prove it. And do you remember when the first time Grillo was on our show and he said that Howard during private parts loved the wig so much, he, yeah. he kept every single one of them and he used to wear them for like his uh, promo tour of private parts. So yeah, yeah I, I think that he got into like the wig wearing thing after his hair was thinning, as Robin yeah, pointed well, out to him, yeah. and decided to start, you know, donning the long hair rock star wigs. Yeah, I never star. believed that was his fucking hair. Ever. Yeah, that rock star, that rock star hair came out of nowhere. Remember, he had one day he had that that weird old lady bouffant fucking do, and then like the next time you saw him, he had hair, his shoulder length hair. There was nothing in between. Hair down past your bra strap. I mean, literally, right. it was like this and long, flowing, curly hair. And then, all, and then during that time with that long flowing hair, he's doing the Channel Nine show, and there's pictures. I I, I saved them, of course, of him doing um, uh, you know, skits where he is putting on skull caps, and that amount of hair, there is no way in God's How are you fitting on a skull right. cap? No, you just can't. I mean, it's just it is just absurd to think that that was all his hair. It, it, it's it, it it is amazing. The I, you know, I, I the, don't know. Everybody he's still a career on the wig. Everybody here knows people his age, and there is not a single person I know in that age group that has that type of hair. Just not, not any, not any. That's got. You mean he got darker and, and darker and thicker? in his late sixties, <laughs> uh, uh, and then changes shape, and it's like a quadrilateral and an octagon. At one minute, and quadrilateral, <laughs> quadrilateral. Uh, uh, text, text who? Text and, and who is a great can, line. <laughs> Katie Eldon is right. He and he really thinks that he's got enough sycophants around him and enablers yeah. that think that looks at that Richard Farrell. It's that same. You could you could shape the wig when it's curly like that. You can kind of like and you got to realize away with he's it. so vain. Any bit of scalp, he goes crazy and he's a fillers. I mean, it's his brand. It's the only thing he cares about. I really believe it's the first priority in his life. Oh, absolutely. Is his vanity and and especially the hair. It's his brand. It's the only thing he cares about. More so than any content, any people in his life, certainly his kids, uh, any lengths. And he'll, <laughs> there's no expense too much when he go, when he takes all the vacation. What do you think he's doing? On the oh, TV my show? God. I don't even want to talk about this yeah. anymore. I am really, really ready for the art of Howard Stern. Oh, that's, that's we are thing. so oh, digressing yeah. into wigdom that it's, Wait, it's uh, I, I can't. I, I hypnotized money. Oh, you my God. I'm vortexing over this. here. I'm literally <laughs> Oh, my God. It. I feel it's like we're stuck. Here. I'm We're watching the, the wig, ice in the wig in my netting. water thing, like floating <laughs> up to the fucking top and receding down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Living our best lives right now. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. All right. Don't so. Me. We're <laughs> shut up. We're going to get now. I'm going to be on the Illustrator page, okay? So I'm not going to be able to read comments or anything like that. So I'm just going to take it from, um from the perspective of my illustrator page here okay so let me oh, go look there at this everybody and everyone in the chat wow. look at this she's she's been trotting and working on this i love it too it, it, it's she's it's almost like a science experiment it's just yeah. done she's had her epics. white wine <laughs> the last few days and cheeses imported cheeses from paris Jeez. and she mm. sits with a significant other and he's like uh monique should we watch this show and she goes no i'm doing this right now i'm gonna stop Wow. Okay. Okay, Bon. So, um, so yeah. So let's just take a look at at Howard and I got Beth. A bit excited. I'm sorry. Really, you know, digging in deep into 
uh, some art out in God. the Hamptons. And he is so shaped like a question mark. Holy shit. Yes, shape. he really is. The, the <laughs> neck, the overbite and everything. <laughs> everything you can see that, that, that he's a weird thing. Look, you know. look at that fucking that, that Adam's apple. That, Jesus. <laughs> Everything about them. All right, so we're going to start in yeah. the early period of Howard's the art. Uh, yeah, okay. So let us move into the beginning. So I think he started doodling, you know, things that we could find online were like 2004, 2005, up into the 15s. So bear with me as I work my way through this little conflab of stuff. Okay. So this is what Howard was known for as an artist. Okay. Doodles. And his doodles consisted of this. This was the Howard oh, classic Lennon. fucking so wannabe John Lennon, John Lennon, Lennon. Yeah, doodle yeah. fest. Not to be confused. And I have a whole other page of people's doodles. Um, but not to be confused. Oh, here, here we go. Here we go. This is um Johnny Depp, I think. Yeah, that's a Johnny Depp doodle. So they're all into like doing this fucking yeah, very egocentric. Here I am doing pen and ink of myself. Picasso. <laughs> and that that you know that says something about a person where he has to doodle himself. Like, yeah, why? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, what's yeah. the fucking point of that? Um, here's another one. This was one that was up for auction that was sold at auction for a couple oh hundred my bucks. God. Yeah, it was heritage auctions. And he, I was, uh, promoting, uh, I was promoting Ed Wood, I believe, in 1994. <laughs> <right> there. <laughs> it's 4 a.m. <laughs> wow! Oh, Edward is uh, there an amazing movie. This Absolutely is another. Amazing. This is another classic Howard Doodle. Again, it looks like everything else he's ever done. It's uh, it's just a piece of shit. Any one of us could do this with our eyes closed. Who's that supposed to be? Uh, Do we have any idea? Laura Lackner is, is got great perspective. Laura Lackner? Yeah. I don't think it's yeah. Laura Lackner. Justin uh, no. Theroux, maybe. That's just. <laughs> I, I, I'm saying Laura drew that. Oh my god! Brutal, brutal. So okay. Um, yeah, this is another one that he did for sale. Look at it. so fucking em emotive. Look at it. It's just this is. That's, that's not even that's, butthead style. What the hell? It's so pathetically right? self-important to do shit like Mike this. Mike Judge plagiarism. And you know, Mike Judge is a for the for the two seconds it took him to do this, and this is what he's auctioning off for for charity. You know what I mean? I think it's really fucking sad that this is what One you can. This is the best you can do is to come up with this to put out on on. Auction. It doesn't matter if it's good, Monique. It matters if a famous person's doing it. Yeah, exactly. Or, or Lackner. It doesn't matter. Art's subjective. You, he loves it because you can't grade it, and there's no. Uh, it's not merit based. There's no ratings. You could just anybody can kiss his ass and tell him it's great. You don't need detail. You don't need lessons. Like you fucking just, Medusa. Do you guys remember when I think this might have started? I, I, I yeah, the timeline's muddled. But do you remember when he became a, one of these awful starts to his show when he said he was obsessed with, 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 with John Lennon's wheels go round and round. Yeah. Wheels go round yeah, and round. Yeah. God. I really love. So like that's he, he. That's his dream life is to just step back from it all and I'll paint and watch society. Uh, it's, I'm society's so beneath me. I'm gonna sit back and watch everybody. Wow. As it goes on, like he's, you what, know, we're all beneath him. The, 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 what, the what, commoners what the actual, are going to kill each other, and I'll sit in my mansion. What, what, the actual, what in the actual fuck is going on in this picture? I still can't figure this thing out. I've seen this for years. I still can't. I know that's a beefus head. I think. Well, it's classic. She has the yeah. underbite. She has the like resting big, big face. Yep. She has the big fucking jaw. She has yep. those weird attached fucking ears. Ears. Yeah, and yeah. you know, and and she has Beady that weird eyes. hairline. Yeah, yeah, this is idiot. perfect, Beth. This is perfect, Beth. Well, so this is major, Beth. <laughs> it's a chandelier. I have no idea what the fuck this is. Is that I the mean, English it's... major ponytail? <laughs> yes. you know, when you were a major, you have that ponytail. <laughs> so, so <laughs> this is what tail. this is what we're coming from, folks. This is <laughs> this is the 
extent of Howard's artistic endeavors. And, you know, Howard loves to position himself as an artist, like, you know, whether it's, whether it's film or talk or, you know, playing the guitar, whatever it is, he deems himself to be kind of artistic yet very humble about his abilities humility. and i can't yes. wait until you hear the fucking article he did on in dan's papers about his artwork it's just fight it just oh angers me so much so okay so this is this is howard the early years right so then he decides he's gonna get into perhaps art. doing a little bit of art right right art so yeah so here he is ah, my favorite oh learning to learning to watercolor Yes, yes. So we're going to start off with the one on top, I guess. Uh, the um, one I love, affectionately call It at the Beach. It um, at the Beach. It at the Beach. Is it looking away? Is it looking toward us? We have no idea. It is just there. Right. So no perspective, no idea how to handle color, art, blending, uh, H- blending of colors. Hands, so- feet, you know, basic things. Why is it Basic derobing? Things. You know, it's it's pulling because it that's what underwear. fucking Beth yeah. does. That's what she does. <laughs> you what know? do you guys think about this post from a uh, I hate Shaul commenting on the collective artwork? I, I feel the same way. I was thinking this. He writes, uh, "No fucking way he did that bottom one or any of them. Hell, even the top one he probably didn't do. Maybe I'm stupid. I don't know. But is it even possible to be taught to paint well in your 60s? And I was going drawing." art school for years when I was younger and I was pretty decent at it and I assumed it was a natural ability you were born with or you have it at all. He went from these kindergarten level paintings of Gary in the 90s to master landscape painter. Yeah. I don't I, it. No. yeah. Hence I the totally reason agree. we're having this show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. None of us believe feel, it. You, so- it. Is art like golf, unless you're Monique, is art like golf kind of like either you have it or you don't? Probably. Just, no, golf is not really. learning golf, it. Just, golf Golf is all about, listen, in the Malcolm Gladwell perspective of life, <laughs> it does 10,000 hours, 10, of, hours, right? Oh, okay, yeah. so, yeah. right? So 10,000 yeah, hours yeah. is what it takes like to make you really, really um, astute at something, right? So 10,000 hours of playing the fucking guitar, of golfing, sure. of doing art, etc. But I think that I don't. I think that how it's cheating a little bit, and we'll get oh, into that a little bit. So, right. Well, yeah. So I mean, let's everybody soak this in, though. Soak in the monotone colors. Soak, soak in, in the 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 absolute. Everything's disproportion. There's abs- There's no background. There's no foreground. There's just. It's just it. And, it's just and, a fifteen-year-old in high yeah, school f- would draw that. No, no, no don't insult fifteen-year-olds, yeah. please. <laughs> What? They're a lot more I mean, talented than this. Ah, oh, yes, this. It's apple. called unemployed ne'er do well beach bum with a camel. Yeah, exactly. Apple right. So let's apples. study the apples. Let's study the yes. green and red apple. He actually and... gave this to David Letterman. He actually gave this to someone. Oh my! God. No, he didn't. <laughs> yes, he no. did. He actually gave this to someone. One hundred twelve percent. Think of he how much this. you think of yourself. <laughs> To yeah, give he didn't give that to Letterman. No way, it's man. F- did he fucking did he admit to Apple? Oh. There's no way. There's no way. And I refuse terrible. to believe you. He did. No, he did. He actually go look it up. It actually is the Can gift that he gave David it, Letterman. Mike? Letterman Letterman thought it was an intern and had sex with it. Can you zoom in on the apples? <laughs> That's favorite stable treat. <laughs> give it an apple, it's happy. <laughs> All right, so this is his early crustacean period of of <laughs> learning watercolor. So this kind of comes in sometime around 2014. That's when he decided that he wanted to actually study this. He had obviously given up on guitar, um, and I guess he was done with chess for a hot minute. So yes, he decided Brian. that yep. watercolor was going to be his new thing. Right. Everybody so, in the chat, he no, this was given to that picture of the apples was given to Letterman. Yes, I know about the flower. That is a different gift. This yeah, was a different that, time. Have we got the picture of the flower? Because that was fucked. And he, yeah, well, yeah, it's coming out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hang I on. I want to feel the sun. Oh, the cat. The, the barbecues. The demon cat. Yeah. So here's the early oh, cat collect- cycle. So yeah, this... Gary Puppet reminds us calligraphy right in line with that. The oh, totally. Classes. 
<laughs> so here's early cat. This is what a cat <laughs> looked like in Howard's world. <laughs> and look at the date, 2017. So it's scantily four years ago. It looks ago. more like a dog to me, doesn't it? Right. To you guys? Or it looks, like, it looks something like nothing. From... It, it no. looks like a malformed. A snout and everything. Yeah. It looks like a dog. It looks, it, it looks like an extra from Pet Cemetery. I mean, it looks like, it looks like <laughs> a cat movie. you paint from fucking memory. Like there's nothing <laughs> about this that has any form, shape, rhyme, or reason. You know, look at look at everything that goes on here. So this is what a cat looked like to him, a scant, exactly like you said, four years ago. Right? Four years ago. Yeah. So hang on, let's Cat. move on. Yeah. Let's Did these all go? AAT. Did these all get sold? These ones? No, no, no. no. These are things Some that Beth has Instagram, put up yeah. on on Insta, yeah. whatever. Um, this also, let's see, this one is also from seventeen. That cat was and... red. Cool Ranch Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> and right, so this is I don't even know which oh. cat this is, but this was another treatment of catism that um mm. Howard apparently did. Yeah, okay. And somehow, somehow we went from this being okay. his artistic endeavor to no, this. This. this is classic. The foot. Wow. The somebody learned how to foot. use somebody learned how to do Photoshop. All right, so this, this is 2018. <laughs> I learned, I learned Microsoft Word first, Dennis, before. <laughs> no, beef is, beef is never going to learn Word. <laughs> Zoom in on that leg, Monique, because that is so bizarre. That's what everybody the ch- is The chat's doing a great job. The chat's pointing out all the fly-by-night, poser, capricious <laughs> hobbies Howard's had over the years. Uh, Gary Puppet, I think, referenced uh, when Howard biked to fucking Jackie's house mm-hmm. with Ralph when he's in the biking mm-hmm. for two weeks in the summer and the mid nineties. And look, look how artistically like phenomenal this is. Here is the cat looking the cat at the looking, watercolor yeah. and there's fucking <laughs> douchebag Howard in his leather. In his know, house. In his house. In his yes. own house. Right. I'm sure because this is framed that he probably gave this as a fucking gift as well. I think yeah, he gave yeah. it to Beefus. I think that's, that's just in its, uh, in its own house. Yeah, I mean, he can have a framer. Just money doesn't matter, so he could get everything framed. It's just amazing. Right, so you, know, you the guy tell me. You over like Ralph and just pick everything up and come back a week later with everything framed. Oh, like, that's what a lot. tattoo. Tell but me yeah, how we went from this to this. Tell me how he went no, from this you, to you this. Don't, you don't. Not in a year. You, you just don't. This is actual. I I believe that this is something that he created. I do. Because the it's so of, horrible. It's horrific. A day of manual labor in your entire 68, 7 years. Oh, yeah. He has veal hands. hands. You know that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, he must get calluses just from holding those brushes. <laughs> oh, this is another one I found. This is from 04. I think this was his probably like his first four-way, foray into... Um, watercolor esque type of stuff. Jesus this is from Christ. 04. Yeah. Oh my tortured, God. Tortured man. Tortured man. Tortured All man. right. So let's move on. So then, <laughs> then oh, let me move this shit over. Hang on. All right. Then we go into our flower phase. And ah, this is where you start phase. to really see how Howard's manifesting his non abilities and this is where i want to actually really highlight out um his flowers so we're gonna see this one let's take for argument's sake where apparently howard did a hold on a second second i think don buckwell did that one i, I recognize <laughs> the perspective that's vintage buckwell wait wait vintage so vintage. howard <laughs> wait wait howard's evolving he's evolving as an artist right in front of our eyes yeah. I really love to watch him roll. Right, so this is supposedly his uh, version of a iris from Rodarte, and um, this was yeah. from this is from this year. So this is this is his piece of art, and then of course some astute person found this, um, which is clearly what he took this from. Is that his publicist, Leslie Rodarte? <laughs> What no, Rodarte. Rodarte. Oh You're um, never gonna hear the end of that. So they're two sisters who are artists as well as designers. Uh, their their clothing is 
shockingly expensive. Um, but they are kind of like full service, legit fucking artists. And that's who Rodarte is. Uh, yeah, oh. All right, wait, but I want to show you something. So just keep this that's in mind. Plagiarism, absolutely. I mean, good God. Yeah, so keep that in mind. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop that screen for a quick second and let me share this one. And I want to show you. So what I did, guys, and people listening in the audience tonight, is I decided to go onto YouTube and Google how to um, create watercolors from photos on Photoshop. And so uh, I I'll start with the first one so that you can see where I started. This is going okay. above and beyond, Monique. I'm so yeah, I did go. I did go above and beyond. <laughs> okay, so I took this paint uh, <laughs> picture. This is a photo. Can you guys see this? Yeah, uh, yeah. Zoom in. Oh, okay. Bit. Zoom in. All right, go, give me a second. Right well, you need a bigger screen then. Hang on. Let me just make it full screen. Looks like Jack second. Napier's a uh, death flower. <laughs> okay. Oh, so Batman. this is an Jack actual Racing photo. Person. And so my first try wasn't really great because I was just trying to follow it a little too closely, um, but I ended up with this, right? So this okay. is my watercolor version of it. So then after I took some time and really, really studied how to do this, and I spent hours at this, just so you know. So I just took a simple thing, something how we would use, a simple, stupid fucking rose, right? And so this is just yep. a photo that I stole off the internet. And you ready? You ready? Here's my watercolor. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Can you zoom wow. in on it? So I am going go to go right in, so we can see the text just sort of feel. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Wow, fuck. Yeah, that would fool me absolutely. Yep. Right? That's that's yeah. uh, that's incredible. I know. His nose is fake. His hair is fake. His eyes are fake. His crazy. Why would the art be real? Why would this be any different? Everything else in his life is 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 he's a charlatan. Why would this be any different? So tell me how I mean, tell me how that's any different from what fucking Howard does. But tell me it's how you not print different that, at all. Tell me how you print that without knowing instantly that it's fake. So well, he's, easily he's because all you have to do is it's, it's I actually he did. I actually layered this onto a textured piece of paper art. Mm -hmm. Literally just fucking no, textured really? paper. Yeah. Okay. And then I and then I put the and these are all the brushes that I've used. I think there's like 40 brushes. And you just you, you take a brush. And I can't really do it now. Hang on a second. Let's see if I even have it right. Genius. Well, and you, you, you take your brushes <laughs> and you you plop are they all color. In layers on the right bottom oh, right. Yeah, are look, they all yeah. layers? So yeah, you those are all my layers. layers. Wow. I think yeah. Seal wants to write a song about this. It's so good. <laughs> Great. Sing it to it, John. Those, those are all my – that's all my layers that I put into wow. this. Wow. I fucking love it. And can you can you please put Baby. up a, a full res picture of that in the thread for this episode? So we can I, zoom in. I can. But how crazy is Are you going to sign your name on the bottom? Like, like that needs to be the banner on the site for a week, I reckon. That that rose. <laughs> okay, I just I'm I only did that so that you guys can see. It's not that hard to and kind of get that together and and make it something. That's and all we all know he's been he's been dabbling with Photoshop for a while. I mean, it's it's been very obvious with all the beefest pictos. You know, he has oh, to use yeah. Photoshop to make it look fucking human. You turn and, up the um, brightness on all of her pictures, and you go, uh, it's get out the, really, no, get rid of the, the 500 T, you know. No, Fudge Sickle, you're right. I can't picture Howard having the patience to go through any of that. You're absolutely right. Instant Howard gratification or the intelligence, the on, or the intelligence, well, exactly right. By the time I got to the rose portion of it, and that was a lot of like, um, trial and error, but I, I literally just followed a YouTube tutorial, <laughs> and I think it took me about 15 minutes to do that. Uh, Anthony the, Anthony, yeah. Anthony writes, I'd rather have a Casey Armstrong blood painting. That's a great <laughs> oh. We just spoke to Casey. Wow. We've got to have him back. When we do the Jason Kaplan show, we got to get him to uh, at least write us a commentary on his experience with Casey. Oh, can we you know, get him on the phone for like 20 he, minutes he or something? He hates him. 
Yeah, that'd be great. Actually, that would be. That's a great idea, Bob. That would be a great have idea. Ca- a Casey cameo appearance. On as the long Casey as he has cap. Skype credits, he'll be fine. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's continue. Let's continue with Howard's flowers. Um, so that's something where you can clearly see that he has taken it from something mm-hmm. else. Here's a, here's another one that's actually quite classic. Um, uh, where yeah. Jeff's two master, he is a Jeff. Now Schiff. you're going to tell me this is no different than what I just did. No different. Not it's no different. No. Jesus Christ. But, but, okay, so this is the stern one from 19. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then this was uh, also a stern one from 19. And Yours then his- this for my wife by request. This you can almost tell he did fucking freehand. Like this is one you can tell yeah, it is looks not like nearly a... as technically perfect no. as the rest. It's a mess. I it's mean, a mess. Honestly, it's yeah, that's the complexion of seal. <laughs> <laughs> right. So so is what he racist? does, cool. what he attempts to do by way of his teacher is he tries to he attempts to do a charcoal drawing mm-hmm. and then put the watercolor over it. And I'm promising you that this is something Howard did himself, as opposed to this. That. There's no fucking way. I mean, look look at that. I mean, that's not even like, no, you could not tell me the same person did both of those. No. You just couldn't because, I mean, look at the leaf texture. Like the leaves on those, whatever flowers those are, I don't even know what they are. They're hibiscus. I have no idea. <laughs> and, 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 and an iris on the other side. The, like the textures don't, like, there's no. Doesn't it, add up. Yeah, does, does they don't match? Like, look at look. Just look out if leaves are going down. I mean, yeah, there's on. no way you go from this to this in a year. No. Sorry, no, unless you have a stroke. No. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the opposite, exactly. Yeah. I think I hate How? Shaul. Nailed it. What? It's perfect post. No, the bad. You don't go from that to that, and you're not. You're certainly not doing that in your late sixties. You're not suddenly becoming, you know, maturing into this virtuoso artist. You're just not. It's just not. It's not. It's just won't. Not, especially not him. No, no. It's, yeah, he's too dim-witted to be able to fucking do that. Can he work a TV set? You think he's gonna figure out how to do a master painter? Oh Christ! So and you know what? Picture. We've been trying to find. I'm positive that I found the picture of this sneaker. It was an actual photo of a sneaker that mm-hmm. he then took Chuck the Taylor cat and, and put it, it into. So yeah. these are current Howard cat treaties. And again, I, you know, I can only go back to the demon cat. Yeah. The, Ugly demon cat. Yeah, cat of the living dead. Same cat, by the way. Oh, Same yeah, cat. that's right. Wow. That's Same cat. Wow. You're going to tell me that this man <laughs> did this. It's, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually so... It's, wow. <laughs> Beth, do these watercolors make me look fat? <laughs> he wouldn't have the energy to be able to paint that because you know he, yeah. he eats the six almonds. He'd be fucking winded after he did the sketch. Can you imagine? <laughs> or how about the wig of Mortis having to stay in that pose the whole time while you're painting? The scoliosis. He well, no, he t- yeah. oh, <laughs> scoliosis. <laughs> right. So here's the infamous <laughs> Helen fat ass Rose. Who oh. was an adorable kitten, but now is just was. like a chunky monster. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so this is this is his detailed here, just like study. Let's study. Oh my god, come on, stitches bullshit. I, I mean, honest to god, call one hundred percent bullshit. Look at the stitches. Come on, in a straight line. How many- how many paintings of Beth's shirtless brothers do you think he's had Laura Lackner do for him? Oh, <laughs> no, he does that as well. What makes us think Laura Lackner is an artist? Like, I'm not, I'm trying <laughs> to understand. I'm not, I'm not even the joke. Oh, Laura. one of her many talents. Come, I think she does calligraphy. Oh. I think she does. <laughs> on, on, on. Wait, KTL. I would love to see Gary Puppet write his Whisker Biscuit tweets mm-hmm. in calligraphy on Twitter to Jillian Barber. Right. If you could figure it out, GP, I'd love to see it. So KTLD Mop Ross. So <laughs> I mean, come 
on, you guys. I mean, are we wrong on this? Are we no, wrong on No, we're not no. wrong. <laughs> no, we're not wrong. <laughs> oh, All right, so, so let's deep. So let's go to the final. Let's go to the final pieces of art we final have here. Stages. And this is this is current. This is uh the artist today. Here we go. Hang on a second. It's insanity. Oh yeah, this okay. is like the the magazine he got. Right with the, the fucking right. with the, the Photoshop of the beach. Still with him, I believe. Stewie, Stewie Z writes in that thread. The whole art thing is just another stupid scheme to promote Howard as this multi-talented, artsy, creative, sensitive guy. Absolutely evolved. Yep, evolved. Yep. Buckwall. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm evolved. He's evolved. You're gonna tell me he did those footprints in the sand? No. You're gonna tell me. How about the straight, the absolute Circle straight in the sand? Wood. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, come that, on, that's a that's a that's a good, that's really good. He couldn't have done that. No, <laughs> it's pretty no. good. You know. So let me read you the article. The looks off. Oh, let's read the article. I All right, let's read the article because then you can yeah. you can understand how the artist uh, felt about this. Here we go. Yeah, in the sand. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm gonna read to you. It may surprise readers to learn that this week's atmospheric cover was done by iconic radio host Howard Stern. A longtime Hamptonite, Stern talks about his artistic process, how he got into painting, and his love of the East End. What materials were used to create this painting? This is a watercolor painting done in Arches cold pressed paper. Fuck off. I used a limited palette. This is a sepia painting, and it is mostly a mixture of burnt sienna and Payne's gray, Windsor and Newton paint. I can go on and oh, on. It is, it is Windsor and sienna. Newton okay. sees, see, <laughs> Series 7 brushes. I do a full graphite drawing first and then put watercolor over it. Your painting is wonderful. What were you thinking or trying to convey with this scene? Oh my Thank God. you. I love the ocean, and I went on an early morning walk in Southampton with the idea of taking pictures for possible paintings. When I saw this bowl of light on the beach and the long, dark shadows cast from broken wooden fence, I knew I found something special, something peaceful and calming. I wanted to share this view with everyone. Painting the beach really allows you to see things in a whole new way. I will never look at footsteps in the sand the exact same way. Drawing and painting those impressions in the sand was something I had never done before. Do you study paintings before you embarked on your present career? If so, did you ever consider early on making a career out of painting? No. I started painting six years ago. I was inspired when I saw the published journals of Guillermo de Toro. Do you remember how jealous he was of yeah, those like art books so that he did? Jealous. So jealous. So yeah. jealous of him. And I thought it was cool the way he treated each page as art. His written words and little paintings look perfect on the page. I wanted to do that. I wanted to journal and draw. I began looking for teachers to help me learn this new language. I started many wonderful I started I started with many wonderful local artists out here. Linda Capello, Molly Dugenis, Anik Libby, um, and made a few visits to the art barge to speak with Chris Cohen. Eventually, I, as I continued my studies and got more serious about it, I studied with the master watercolor painter, Frederick Bronson, Rosen, and threw myself into the process. Rick's process. work is remarkable, and I like his philosophy when he explained that he never wanted me to paint like him, but would give me the tools to create my own work. All right, let's pause for a moment there. Yeah, Christ, wanna, yeah. it's so yeah, pretentious. It's making me want to throw up. I know, I know. God. I just need it's to. Yes, sir, laundry room. He sounds like a fake human being speaking. Oh, my God. In impersonation Dear of a human Lord. being. Okay, just such hang on. Let me finish asshole. this, and then we're going to come back. Right, such an asshole. Oh. What, was your first, what was your first encounter with the Hamptons, and why did you decide to make a permanent home here? So listen to this crock of shit. I grew up in Roosevelt, Long Island, but was oh. unaware of the Hamptons. I only became aware of it when I was on radio in New York and heard people talking about how wonderful it was. A friend invited me, you know, we all know yeah. that it's Dominic. A friend invited me to use his home out here and my girlfriend, now wife Beth, and I visited and were blown away. How did I not know about this place? It was so beautiful, peaceful, and perhaps heaven on earth. And, and by the way, I think Suttering John got married in the fucking Hamptons. How do you not know about the Hamptons? I now spend so much of my time painting the Hamptons. I have several more sepias of beach scenes 
And I just oh. finished painting a Deerfield Road. I painted so many views of the Corwith ba barns that I've lost count. Glad I got that done because sadly the barns are now gone. What is your favorite thing to do here for fun? Just walk the beach, go to dinner. Always love Jean George restaurant at Topping Rose before COVID hit. I love when my kids are out here. We have some wonderful friends close by and love to have people over for dinner. I, it's a place to relax. My wife and I also love the wildlife out here and spend a lot of our time with animal rescue. I wish more people would donate to Ave Evelyn Alexandra Wildlife Rescue Center in Hampton Bays. Jeannie and her crew are tireless and they need money. Without the wildlife, the Hamptons would just be another suburb. What are your plans for the future? I will continue to paint for the joy of it. Maybe if I put together a big collection of Hamptons paintings, I'll be bold enough to have a show. But right now I'm honored to be on the cover of Dan's Papers. I love how you present local artists and I've seen some incredible work on your front page. I'm excited to be among oh. them. Fuck. Oh. So, you know, I, I love the part about the wildlife in the Hamptons where he has his fucking four acre home on the beach, fucking driving wildlife away. Congratulations. No, <laughs> my my what my favorite part is Monique nailed it very quickly. He wouldn't mention, and I, I'm just this isn't like innocuous. It's so funny how he would not mention Dominic Barbara's name. Nope. He wants nope. to distance himself from all the controversy. As you right, who's that? Judy Tanuna, right? Dominic kicked to the curb. He yep. could not bring. It's so simple. My friend Dominic Barbara. You can't give the guy the gratification of saying his name in that piece as the reason you're out there. And I love his my love of the East End. I guess he means Mastic Shirley, right? He's got to be talking about Shirley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the John, how does anybody from Long Island not know about the Hamptons? <laughs> I, 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 I grew up. I, I, wait, I grew up in Staten Island and knew about the fucking Hamptons. I mean, come on. I mean, give me a break. I, he, unless, no. unless you think. No. The man spent his entire in Long Island. Your high school career is nine through twelve, mm -hmm. and or I'm sorry, ten through twelve. His entire high school career is at Rockville Center, not Roosevelt. Yep. So mm -hmm. he glosses over. I mean, it's just it's, it's just a lot of either straight out lies, wait, wait. Or and then he went, and he went or. But wait, even worse though, he goes to Boston. He goes to Boston College, right? Where they, you know, that's an expensive school, and there are probably people from New York that would have gone to the Hamptons. I mean, it's, it, it's one of those things where no, you, you know, he's so yeah, full you know of the shit. Name and you don't, you don't, you're right. It's so you, full of shit. It's, it's not, I was a teenager. We were going to the fucking Hamptons. I mean, come yeah, on. I mean, come on. <laughs> Idiot. Um, so I just, so then I did a little, um, dive on his, uh, artist, his teacher. And it came across, oh. well, and you saw what he was talking about in terms of how he does his process, right? Um, so here's his teacher talking about his process, which is the foundation of this technique is based on graphite drawings and the layering of washes on transparent watercolor. Over the course of my 30 years of teaching, I've learned to communicate this approach in an accessible way that can be tailored to suit your personal artistic goals. So he... This is how he teaches. This is what he does. He okay. does charcoal and then he paints watercolor on top of it. But he's a experienced, just very, very classically trained um, artist. Okay. Look at this. Oh, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, this is. But how? Well, that's really real. That's a watercolor. Oh, wait, no, that's just a picture of the outside. I mean... No, that's a watercolor. That's a watercolor? Mm -hmm. Wow! So that's photorealistic art. That's what they. That's that's, that's a that real. That's, that's a real artist. Is that Grohl and Roy? Oh, you know, yeah. uh, McC McCoy's. <laughs> now you see it, right? Now yeah. I see it. Yeah, yeah, close up. Yeah, it's fucking wow. awesome. Yeah, now seventy nine never gets that. No. Oh, oh that's history. There's few people in the world. Who that's by Barbados. Stivers you know? <laughs> Street. Is that a Barbados brownstone? Yes. 72nd, yeah, right by Howard? <laughs> yep. That's right. It's five streets away. And if you that's put the, Howard uh, there, he couldn't find station. his way home. Oh. No. That's the subway station the Warriors ran out of to run to Riverside Park. Is it? From the baseball <laughs> fears. Yeah. They said it was 96th in the movie, but they really used the 72nd subway station. They got out and they Dude. ran uh, west. Not too far from you. Oh, by the way, the Lezzies, Monique, the scene where they uh, – right by you. 
right by you in Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> the Lezzie's. There you go. The Lezzie scene. <laughs> the Lezzie scene. <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian watercolor. <laughs> Super trooper. My school friend's family had a shitty broken down shack in the Hamptons. I stayed over once and I remember playing softball in the overgrown weeds. It was a dump. Hard oh, to believe yeah. what it's become. That's yeah, true. No, it was what was the first uh renaissance of the Hamptons? Would you say like the early nineties is when mm-hmm. it started to explode? Because I only knew I'm not I'm fucking fifty minutes away from it. I it was a Spielberg getaway. It was like the mm-hmm. that's how you heard of it, like in the eighties, Billy Joel. It was a couple of names, but it wasn't huge yet. I feel like the early nineties is when it exploded. I feel like when the nineties happened, um, there were a lot of shares in the Hamptons. So you could go yes. out there with all your friends and everybody chipped in and for like ten thousand dollars for the month. You could stay at one of these beautiful houses on the beach and go to all the nightclubs and do the whole night scene and whatever. And that was very much a 90s thing to do. And for Howard to not have any idea no. what – yeah, I don't, I don't believe it. No, absolutely I don't. Not. Lizzie, Lizzie Grubman inspired me to want to back people over in my SUV. And that Ooh. really put the Hamptons on the map. I thought. Yes. Yes. The Lizzie Grubman years are exactly when <laughs> yes. I used to go out she there was. as well. Yeah. <laughs> she was the face. She was the gap tooth face for the Hamptons for a couple of years. When nice. I just... You're brutal. Okay. You could so, drive an SUV through the front teeth. You got That's snacks, kind of. Monique. You, you oh, got I'm snacks? starving. I'm sorry. Yes, I have snacks. Yeah, I know. that what was very got? professional. I'm sorry. What have you got, though? Oh, uh, you I know, don't even want to tell you. Was it a uh, Snickers it's bar? Cheese, isn't it? Is it cheese? It's it's um. <laughs> it's rice cake. <laughs> it's... <laughs> what I is don't it? know why, but I want to know. You no. can't even admit it. It's so bad. Frozen bananas. I can hear it. <laughs> it's cheese. This is fully. It's a brie. It's a, it's yeah. a well. While we were playing the Opie and Anthony thing. I ran downstairs. Oh my thing. god! Yeah, I got a. <laughs> he got in the car and drove to Trader Joe's, right? <laughs> and, the car, and then came back. Exactly. No, I got a chunk of um, lasagna and I put it in the microwave. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I Holy shit. I'm fucking glad I asked. Holy <laughs> shit, lasagna. naughty girl. <laughs> And why you, why no you just eat it idea. out of the fridge and put it? Why you just put it on a stick and eat it out of the fridge? I mean, oh my <laughs> god, lasagna on a stick. Just carry the laptop oh, down, okay. mic. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> I love oh it. Thank you. Oh my fucking god! Yeah. Well, you needed to know. Just keep shoveling it in. <laughs> Next it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> obvious at all. Not at all. Couldn't tell. I thought she brought a plate of cheese before the show started. I was wrong. Oh, she made the lasagna really during the show. Oh, what there was cheese. In, uh, bolognese. <laughs> what else goes on in that fucking house? You know? <laughs> oh, my fucking God. All right. So that's it for Wi Fi. Wi-Fi's <laughs> eating, eating lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> collating oh, her collating her collection of fucking bungee jumping pictures from 10 years ago just <laughs> <laughs> when i saw that i went holy shit I, I don't even know how you jumped honestly we should do a whole episode on that because you uh, know what i have to tell you that was i could not do <laughs> that was an experience to end all experiences and um and I was one of the last people to jump. So you, you start to get a little bit agitated and you're getting more and more nervous as you're waiting. And um, and what happens is if you kind of start to chicken out while you're right at the tip of the edge, they'll push you. You know what I mean? It's like you got to go. It's time. I didn't one, two, know three, go. that. They, they'll actually physically Great. push you or they just yeah, keep saying well, jump, jump, jump. That's jump. the wonder of doing it and not in America because there's no liabilities. So. That's exactly right. Yeah, and yeah. so I could. So oh, all I'd do I was it if told, someone would push me. Yeah. Now all I was told <laughs> is listen, you just have to go for it. Don't let them push you. Don't let them be responsible for how your dive goes. You just have to swan dive right the fuck off. And that's what I did. No, and I, I was freaking out you. that my feet were gonna like fall out of that. I mean, you're literally only ho- held by that one thing around your ankle. And it's kind Isn't of freaky. Isn't it like a really tight thing? I th- imagine it's like this 
the thick thing around your legs? Is it doesn't it feel good? Like strong? it does not feel good. No, it does not Shit. feel good. That would tear. Um, I don't even know how you could do that. That's unbelievable. Well, and then when you bounce, when you bounce, it's it's a zero gravity kind of moment. So you're just like floating back up and then floating back down and then you bounce again. So you take about three bounces before somebody comes down on a zip line and attaches the, themselves to you and then they pull you back up. What's so, first, Monique, are you first... agoraphobic? Do you have any fear of heights whatsoever? No. No, none at all. Wow. I was in your place I'm, I'm that time. Worst. I couldn't I, – I, I believe I'm acrophobic. When I was at your place, I looked at – and that view is phenomenal. And I got that – I had like visions of myself like chasing after – you know, I'm daredevil chasing after Bullseye in Hell's Kitchen. I couldn't even <laughs> look out your fucking window without getting I the – I just – I couldn't. My hands really... start sweating and I become like nauseous. If I'm like really stories, yeah, I can't oh. do anything. <laughs> Wait, I, 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 I start sweating on a step stool. But, no, that's just me. I, I scared of heights. Marty's I'm down. terrified. Like, I would love to go skydiving <laughs> or bungee jumping, but I well, can't. Well, what about roller coasters? No. Oh, no, no, no problem. I've been on them no. when I was a kid, but I would be screaming, like terrified. I was like very anthropologist. <laughs> From Brisbane, <laughs> I got the uh, fudge sickle pass for ice chewing, Monique. Uh, siblings, <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, the fudge sickles after tonight, arm gets a pass for ice chewing. Well, leave it to fudge sickle, right? Uh, siblings yeah. and ice to give Ooh. me the uh, ice pass. Thank ice you, pass. I have no idea what you're All talking right. about. Thank you. Fudge sickle, wrote, like, but you eating, you making uh, instant noodle and bolognese lasagna <laughs> during the show. <laughs> Me what is he? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, this is a little scavenger. I bet yes, like... Judy Tanu, Electra. That's who I was looking for. Love, love, love me some nachos. <laughs> I'm like a chipmunk night now. My my jowls are filled with fucking pasta. I put it down to the floor though. Now I'm done. I'm done. Look, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm the Ice Cup King of North Poughkeepsie. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, two, have you ever been on Two Masters uh, YouTube channel? Oh, yeah. I he's love this it. crazy audio file. He has oh, really? He's already, yeah, he's like an arty artific, arti, artificianato in ways that Say you Say that fast see. five times. What? Arty <laughs> aficionado? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy compilations, tons of dirt. He's on all the like the live chats, and is so you ubi more ubiquitous than, than Jonathan Mendelson. You love me um, some too, Master. <laughs> wow. I'm getting so excited. Imagine Monique eating with a ladle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh my god, I love you, people. I really do. Um, all right, so. We are oh. we're kind we're kind of done with the art of how we're chewing. Joey Chestnut. What? Joey. Oh yeah. <laughs> Joey Chestnut is Joey a champion Chestnut eater. Good. Oh my god! It was literally a piece of lasagna that was like three inches square. That's all I had. Um, uh -huh. So I have some things to talk about and promote. Um, I did want to do Emily Stern's Madness. Yes. I do want to know what this Andrew Zarian show clip is that you sent oh, me, John. Oh, well, it, it, it was another hair thing. It, was, um, it complimented the, it, uh, Spencer Coburn's hair story. Oh, Just we're still on hair. We're no, back to hair. We, went away, we came back. We, we can't back. get off the wig. We just can't it's get a, off the wig. Truth saga. Okay. Um, that, I, we can say I, that for the cleaning out the computer show if you want. Okay. I want to talk about two things. Uh, one... I am attempting right now to schedule two one-on-one -on -one interviews. Um, one of them is going to be really, really fun on the heels of the Brent interview. <clears throat> and then the other one will definitely be with um, Scott in the next two weeks or so. Oh. So oh, boy. I will throw up a, uh, uh, threads for for the two How one on ones. Because what do you mean? He's not he's not going to talk about anything. You know. That, Listen, right? you know. You, you, we, we, we he did one like a month, three weeks ago with who was it? John Dennis. Who Grillo. Did he do? Grillo. It was Grillo. You see, Monique, anything. Monique, Monique confessed to us she was 
a pubic hair away from sitting in on that interview, and that would have <laughs> really, really augmented it. She blew off Gorilla's. She went into the mode I go into, the bipolar mode where you don't want to talk to anybody, and she blew Gorilla's calls off and uh, didn't know no, what no. the hell it was for. He never left a message. And no, he never leaves a message. <laughs> oh, so and you, yeah. if he did say that, you easily would have uh, rose. I would have. I would have. I would have jumped on it. He was actually, Gorilla was actually a little bit upset with me because he texted me like two weeks ago. He's like, do you want um, Elliot Offen for your show? And I'm like, nah, I already did that. And he's like, yeah, but, you know, you can have him on for like the full show. I'm like, no, no, I'm good. Thanks. He's like, well, I'm shocked that you would say that. I'm like, why? There's like anything I wanted to ever talk to Elliot about was Ooh, done sorry. within like an hour's time. And, and we're done. We're good. You know, there's no... There's no buffalo left to pick clean on that guy. Like, and then you know, Elliot people people love Elliot for maybe for, for all the wrong yes. reasons, but he's good in small doses. And I don't know if I don't know what you want from him in an interview. Is it just his salacious criminal past? I mean, what dirt does he have on Howard? I mean, there's that mm. one confrontation he got into. We got banned from the studio, but I don't know how much, like you said, buffalo carcass esque. Can you what there's more can you there. get from him? Yeah, no, there's I'm nothing not against left. it, but if you're not into it, I'm not. The gonna, only things you know. that I could think about how he interacted with the show, how he talked to Gary on the phone before the show, if 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 Gary would suggest he'd be more aggressive, things like that, I'd like to know if it was. No, but I think oh, that like, his like mind Gary doesn't said, yeah, work. Come in and go. Yeah, you're, you're mind, logical. His mind doesn't work that way. You know, he's yeah. he's very much the. Jewish transvestite of sour shoes. Like he doesn't have a mind that <laughs> nice. actually processes things in a normal, coherent, cogent way. I don't way. know. He, he's a performer. He knew he was performing when he went in there. It wasn't. I, it wasn't. His I don't know. Character. Uh, he's kind of know. perpetually. I don't think that's a character. I, I think he's in con man pro wrestling mode at all times. And I don't yeah. know if there's any yeah, shaking I, I, from it. Yeah, I don't think there's. I think that the line has been blurred between the real Elliot and that Elliot. I think it's gone because he's been doing it for so long. There's no, no way you, you come out of it. You remember the first time he ever came in? Stacoma. He was very calm and quiet and and very almost like dainty the first but time, and then he, he ramped has it a up. Crazy crime, a completely rap different sheet. persona. Yeah. But he oh, scares amazing, me. John. He it's scares amazing. me a little. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I He's went over to Gorilla's house one time when he was there and he was doing his show, and just his whole look and the makeup and the way he acts seems, actually frightens me. Like it seems it's, a little. I don't blame him. A little, little psychotic. He, he seems a little psychotic. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Steve Lankford, of all people, Monique said he was scared of being in a cab with him. Like he has that thing. He's uh. a Batman villain. He's I a real life the, Batman. Villain. I thought all of his stories were made up until I googled it and saw no. um, news scanned news articles from the eighties. Yeah, uh, no, exactly that's exactly what he was. He did the light bulbs fiasco uh, and the police uh, setting up a sting uh, with cops going around all the payphones. That all happened. It was unbelievable has, when I read it. I couldn't believe it. He has like a Teresa Judice level of, of fraud and scams to the tune of, I don't know, millions of dollars. It was and you'd think he'd still million. be. And still that guy. Some, <clears throat> yeah. What, they he's said still he that was guy. a mastermind. The police said he was. Melvin's that's why they called Melvin. him elegant. You know? I yeah. can see how I can see how he he is uh, able to finagle his way into people giving him things but he 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 really is you know high pitch eric with just a little bit more oh, um, education yeah. you know oh, he no, he's somehow <laughs> finagles <laughs> his way are, right? into having people help him and give yeah. him and yeah. and he physically cannot work like he's not somebody that you can you know he's very much in the realm of like um um, Nicole Bass, where they can't do a job because they think no. that they're better than that, and therefore, you know, they can't be that person. He can't dress in a fucking suit and tie, put his hair back in a ponytail, not wear makeup, and go in for a job interview. It no. would just it would never happen. He's just not that person. So he can only um, exist on the 
benevolence of other human beings. Mm. To Very strange that he turned up in right? a suit and tie right. he's when unemplo- they had his daughter he's unemployable. in there, remember? Yeah, he's Ooh. unemployable. That's exactly right. He his would, calves I are mean, fucking but... impressive. You're exactly <laughs> right, Frank Single. <laughs> He is he is a con man's con man though. I mean, you're right. You couldn't you you couldn't interview him for much longer. There's the the, the, and there's nothing I really want to know. I I got to be honest with you guys. I mean, there's certain people I'm interested in, right? Like this one person that um, I'm working Mm. on uh, interview with for June, and you know nothing any of the three of you would be interested in, but I'm positive everybody else will be. But it's, um, you know, just somebody in that whole um, going back to that Bubba Brent world. And then Scott, I think, will be interesting in terms of um, doing it on a on a on a scale of just kind of what I know he can talk about. And just don't bring up his don't bring up his dead wife. Yeah, don't bring up the dead wife. Yeah, that that, would be good. You know. (laughs) I gotta bring up. Positive. I gotta not bring but up the fucking. Dead listen, wife. we've got to. But sure. I don't know how you can. I don't know. You're not going to be able to get anything out of him. That's the prop. That's what annoys me about these people. Like Brian. Yeah, you're, like, you're, they're just. What uh, Scott What's his NDA status? Like, sucks. Do we know that at least? What do you mean in terms of status? What's his Scott's NDA? <clears throat> uh, do we believe he has one? Because he acted like he did on Grillo. We one thousand percent know he has one. Yes, right. we discussed it. Told you this, or we just assume? Yes, it? yes, yeah. we know okay. he has one, and you know that's why he had lawyers come into it so that he could uh, negotiate the best deal for himself before he signed the NDA. And <laughs> oh God, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Casey you know. Turbo's Casey Turbo's with an old school line of the night uh right scott's giving you vertical blue balls <laughs> wow <laughs> that's wow. so good that is so good that's, yeah, that's jackie right. martling that's level <laughs> <laughs> sorry to interrupt I, I didn't wait want no to i wanted to go back to melvin melvin was talking the, about Artie, and he wrote a whole treatise here so hang on i want to read that um, he says, Artie is done. There's no way he can come back. He burned too many bridges and the landscape has changed. Christ, they are canceling Tony Hinchcliffe. There's no way he can exist in comedy anymore, even if he was clean. My guess is that either he's back on the streets or his paranoid android living out his final days with his mom. You know what? what? Weird. Well, no, every time, done. every time done. that weird Norm Mc. Donald from memory type guy does one of those stupid fucking interviews with somebody from the Stern show, which is basically like liquid ambient. He always tries to do like some sort of bullshit arty update. And there is no fucking arty update. There is not a single person that has an arty update. No one. They can't cancel arty because he hasn't done anything um, racial, sexual or anything like that. It's not a thing like that. He's just fucked. So, they can't cancel him, and and you Every it, all of these information. Arty fans will be there the moment he comes back to yeah, start shows of them. again. That's probably what he's waiting for. I I don't know. I don't know what the end game is for an Arty. You know, he, I feel like without even trying, he has been completely and utterly out of the uh, mainstream for a long time now. You yeah. know, and so yeah. at what point yeah. does a comeback make sense for him, if ever? You know, I, well, I don't. Doing a, another series of crashing, I guess that probably not will. with him. He, not he, with him. He, he was on the other two, wasn't he? But but again, he was, as but... Monique pointed out, how do you insure someone? HBO, are you an? You're the 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 uh, Judd Apatow and, and and Pete Holmes. Are you enablers? Is 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 the solution to him when is rock bottom? Just cutting him off from show business. Take your SAG card. You can't work in show business anymore. As long as he keeps getting employed because of his derelictions and his persona is the crazy addict. And as long as he's being employed for those things, there is no bottom unless you cut him off from show business. That's the only way a lesson can well, be learned. Take well, away his SAG card. You can't work. You can't have your little HBO gig. And that's what would – but other yeah, than that – Aren't we there? Him. Wait a minute. Aren't we there? He hasn't been in anything in how many years now? No, how many years has it been now? Just well, three? crashing. A crashing is the only so. thing he's done. Okay. It's like, three years. It's three years ago. So I, is it canceled, it, Judy Tanuna, or did it go on over. one of those like HBO hiatuses where it disappears no. for four years? and then, I don't know. It seems like they don't actually cancel things. It just like – it just goes away. 
Oh, hi, Monsoon. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's... Um, you, remember, you remember when he's Kirby done. Enthusiasm used to take, like, yeah. six years off in between he, But there's but no, no way he, Crashing he, crashing didn't have enough following to come back. It, 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 it's not... It's not I, no, I'm, for, I'm just using it as, as an example but, of something where it's waiting no, for no, him no, no. when he wades but, back into show business. Artie will, Artie will kick it back with a book. He'll start, he'll do it. He's probably with writing a book. a book now. Yeah, he'll write a book about the last few years. Again, like, like everybody else, buy it. no, That's like true, every, no, I don't agree. Like everyone else who has left the Stern show and who's gone out on their own, you know, Artie never made the money he made while he was on the Stern show. You know, Artie, Artie was <laughs> able, I mean, he was doing, he was doing shows with Bob Levy. I mean, that's really yeah. where he was. There was no more Carnegie Hall. There was no nope. more Radio City. There's no more of these like There's gigantic venues. For sure. He can too. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't well, know. Let's not gloss over the last. Uh, this, this is the art of sizzle chest, where just, Artie's going to be punching up scripts like Jackie. I mean, <laughs> who's on a roll tonight, sizzle chest? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, crashing is not no. coming back. And, no, and it's, it's just I don't think they would have Bart, Artie back. You know, they have to have insurance on those shows, and they do random drug testing, and you know, they know Artie's in a bad place. Now, you know, we can speculate on Artie. We can speculate that maybe from doing all these drugs and maybe doing some intravenous stuff that maybe he got a little sick. Maybe, you know, maybe he got some sort of bad uh, blood disease of some sort. Oh, if um, he died tomorrow from a heart problem or something, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I wouldn't be surprised. Like no one would. We never got a visual of him the last time that he was on whatever his name show. And um, Nick DiPaolo. Uh, Nick DiPaolo show. Oh, right. So, so there was nothing there that just – you know, it was all very kind of, yeah, I'm just living out my life and doing what I need to do in order to stay clean. And either we're going to see the resurgence of an Artie who's going to be like, I don't know, 400 pounds, or we're going to see this really bizarrely skinny, like I don't think there's an in-between for him right now. It's either ever, no. either way we're going to look at him and be shocked at what he looks like. I really believe that. And um, and he will come back. I mean, you know, he's no Billie you Eilish. Go away, changing man. her, you can, changing you her can hair blonde. And, and and getting she, a set he, of boobs. <laughs> but but he can <laughs> he I don't know. I don't know what the trajectory is anymore. You know, comed <laughs> comedy. Comedy as we knew it is basically fucking dead. I mean, dead. Xavier and I had a whole conversation about Joe Rogan and how he talked about how, you know, woke America is the death of the white male and how, you know, comedians can't make movies the way they used to. And they were so much fun and it was so much funny. And yeah, yeah. you know what? Okay. There might be a speculative point to you can't make a movie like Tropic Thunder in today's climate anymore. And I get you can't have Robert Downey Jr. in blackface and, and basically have um, Ben Stiller as like a retarded guy. And I get that. But on the other hand, you know, all these, all these comedians have gotten incredibly fucking wealthy from people like Netflix paying them a shit ton of money yeah. to do like a couple of stand-up shows and and they can basically phone it in you know so all these people similarly to Howard who maybe started out as kind of like the up and coming guy same thing with a lot of these comedians you know they start out struggling they I mean everybody starts out that way and stay you know the one that stays that way is fucking Shuli but you know they start out like in a certain way and then they get incredibly fucking wealthy and then they lose touch with the people well, that they associated with to begin with. So yeah, you can say that you can't write a fucking comedy movie like you used to, but you know what? Nobody's out there looking for fucking what's his name. Who's like, does all his Netflix specials now. Um, Bill Burr. Bill Burr. No, no, no. The, uh, the other one who like has all his friends do it with him. Um, Adam Sandler. Like, oh, you God. know, there that came like a tipping point for an Adam Sandler, you know, after maybe little Nicky that it's like, okay, he's nothing to me anymore. But Netflix will go out and pay him millions and millions of dollars to names? just phone in yeah, some well, bullshit yeah, comedy. They, they all Rinse get every last one of those. Every last one of those comics gets gets a, a, affected by the fame and the money and you lose. So you've got to have that little bit of that edge. And, and uh, most of them have lost that edge. They don't have that. They're, edge, they're not that, chasing. That you got to remember with what, most. Com I think ninety-five percent of comedians have no interest whatsoever in the art of comedy and no, all but, it's doing. They want to be famous. It's about I, however I get there the fastest way. It's not about art. It's not about talent. It's not about comedy. It's about fame. 
and they'll do whatever it takes. If it takes, but, do a podcast, and you don't have to go to yuck but yucks. Arm, and, arm. That's the problem. And there, you just you that just is. That's what problem. I'm saying. That's the problem. Richard Pryor right. did not. Richard Pryor did not do it to be to be famous. I mean, granted, yes, but Richard Pryor was funny till he died. And that's Red Fox was funny idol. till he died. You know, these they were funny till they died. Because, you know, they did not let them get affected with this Hollywood bullshit and trying to appease people. They just said what was on their mind. And that is the yeah, problem of, uh, of what is going on. We're going into a fucking absolutely. rabbit hole right now with this. I so know, but people are, thing. people are paying them to be yeah, these comedians and they are bereft not. Of, of entertainment anymore. Because, I mean, for argument's sake, who's that little, little black guy who... Kevin Hart. Kevin fucking Hart. Right. So oh, he Jesus did a comedy Christ. special on Netflix. And one night, you know, I'm completely bored out of my mind. I'm like, oh, let me see what this is all about. And there's Kevin Hart during the time of COVID doing a show for about 50, 60 people, 50, 60 people in his living room. His Jesus fucking Christ. living room is tremendous and here he is talking about the struggles of the black man when oh he had COVID. and it's like bitch sit the fuck down like there is nothing about you that conveys struggling black man like the nothing. only thing that he struggles with is height i mean because i mean when he was riding in that <laughs> accident he was in that fucking baby seat that's why he wasn't driving the car i mean come on that i mean how does somebody I mean, it's so fucking you, you bizarre that someone like not, that is famous not, you're I mean, not really, cut seriously. from the cloth, Dennis. You know the the the, 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 the insatiable desire for attention and 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 fame is on all the self promote yourself all day long. Where you never get tired of yourself. You never get oh I'm sick of myself. Not today. Not the, they'll. There's nothing they won't do. There's no attention that's not enough. And it's just something you don't relate. To. It's it's a it's a crazy sickness. And, and, uh, and Kevin Hart is the money. guy you get. Kevin Hart is the guy you get when Chris Rock goes. My God, that's a shitty script. I mean, exactly. I mean, it's and that's seriously. not saying much he's, because he's most, I know. You know, you look he at Chris Rock. Over- definitely has had some sort of like visits to grandma. You know, yeah. is trying to look, uh, you know, a little bit younger than he really is, and trying to reposition himself as a serious actor. And it's like, guys, you all have to get over yourselves. Like, it's kind of done. Those buddy cuties, those anchormen, those this is forty. You know, all those movies yeah. are. I really kind of a thing of the Apatow, past. Sir. Yeah, it's no. Seth Rogen, Judd Apatow. Well, well you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can only keep on going to that fucking well so many times exactly. in a row. And you're just fucking tired of it. I mean, and to be, and quite honestly, Gen Z and millennials, I, uh, and even myself, even though I'm not in that age group, I'd sooner sit in bed watching fucking funny TikToks until like midnight than to watch a, a comedy movie. I mean, there's just nothing out there. We are bereft of that type of entertainment anymore. Totally bereft. So, Totally. Fuck you, Dogan, because you know what? You haven't been funny since uh, since Jesus left the Jews, for God's sake. So you're just not you're not funny anymore. You've sold out, too. You're making 90 million dollars. You moved to fucking Texas. You know, you're pontificating on shit that you're really not saying in your fucking lane. Very similar to oh. Howard with, you know, your your edicts on on vaccines and what people should be doing. Nobody's looking for you to do that. Nobody. So shut the fuck up. And Howard could not be more boring if he tried. I, I can't get through a show. You guys, I don't know how you're doing it anymore, Dennis. I what cannot get through a show. <laughs> and how many years? How many years have we been saying we can't get any worse? How many years? Oh, no, I stopped saying that because I know it can. Yesterday, I can. I, I, he actually had yesterday, whoever that guy is, Chi, Chi, Chu, whatever the fuck his name is. He was literally the worst guest that's ever been on the show. Uh, uh, what oh, yeah, 112 percent, Michael? Yeah. All right, oh, I'll tell Jack. you why. Michael yeah, Jack. What our Chi yeah. Chi, whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah, oh, it was he, he literally fault. had. It was he had fault. so he no 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 no. It, Michael has absolutely no fucking life experience. That guy doesn't deserve a ten minute fucking interview. He yeah, is so would, empty. No, 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 no he's so empty of it. it. How it started started on him and asked him all the process and how what working with Warren Michaels is like. like, He has nothing else. Well, he does the fake comedy dissection thing to pretend that he's into the 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 entire interview was broken down into three things: Lord Michaels, hey, you're black, hey, hey, you're black, and what's it like working with this guy, this guy, and this guy? Because the guy has nothing else on his plate. His entire IMDb is like one entry. 
I mean, it's I, seriously. I can't even tell if that guy, Michael, I never watched Saturday Night Live, but I can't even tell if that guy's funny as a comedian. He isn't. Howard, there was nothing for him to do with Howard. He couldn't even uh, get comedy to happen. And, and, and Howard's Lou, hopeless. And Cindy Lou Who, I don't give a fuck how to say the guy's name because he's not important enough for me to learn it. Seriously. What are we talking about? Michael well, he, 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 was, that was, who, whatever the fuck his name is. That is a whole host we can update with compared big to the deal. Colin Jost. Howard doesn't know who he is. He probably no. learned who he was the, the two, three, three days before. Oh, yeah. He was giving notes on him. He's pretending he's trying to dissect comedy. It's the phoniest fucking Lorne Michaels Hampton circle jerk there is. He has everybody from S. And now he's, how many years do we listen to him piss on Saturday Night Live? How unfunny. And he was right. He went on there and told them how unfunny he is. And now everything they do is great. And it's all yeah. part of the fake. Uh, look, I'm a left winger. But he is the poorest imitation of a liberal there is. And if anybody buys that he's actually – I mean so in order to keep that facade up, you have to kind of kiss SNL ass. It's just part of the, no, the, the celebrity the circle. There was circle. so much stuff that was worse. Like he – Chris Wilding is taking over the fucking show. Oh. He's on it all the time doing – George Takei impersonations. Fucking hell. It was so oh, bad. And it's yes, so it's so tired, right? Killing me. Uh, well, like, oh my God, what are you All doing, right. man? They have new characters for cranky calls, the fake cranky calls, and it's Chris Wilding. And you yeah. didn't think it could get any worse. No. God, no, it has. What's happening with this it show? Has. It's And do you know what they're doing now? They're fucking, everything that happens gets fucking reviewed the next show. Oh, yeah. fucking they do a victory minutes. lap. It's a victory uh, lap. Yeah, reading emails. Um, yeah, replaying it food. pretty it's, much. Yeah. They're replaying it and reading, reading it emails talents. from where? Who's from going nowhere. out of their Fat way office. to write listeners, an email? Listeners, and they get the callers, and then and they they just repeating half of the well, interview, talking about it again. It's fucking unbelievable. Fuck. I, it, it it has become it has become parody upon itself at this point. I mean, you can't you could can almost not mock what is a mockery. I mean, that, that yeah. show is utterly a mockery oh, of it, what a morning show it's should be. Tedious to even wait, type it out. Now, wait, like here, how here, listen to this stat now. Listen to this stat. Today was today was show forty telegrams. Telegrams. <laughs> so today was uh, so, show. So Lisa Stein. Today was show 47, okay? Um, I'm, I'm, he's doing I'm 82 upset. shows this year. It was so That's, bad. That means there's 35 shows left, okay? There's seven months left in this it's year. It's May. <laughs> it's May. He can't take three months He is not going to do a show off, this though, summer. Like you were saying. I, he, he can't I guarantee. take three months off, Kenny. He is. He What's is? the longest he's ever taken off? A month? Two weeks. Uh, a, oh, a, month. Yeah, a month, yeah, a month. A month. No, 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 no. He's never been he's off been a month. month. He's been no. off a month. No, yes, he has. For three Christmas, months, though. Christmas uh, that, two years ago, Christmas to January, it was a depending month. Depending on how, yeah, depending on it how was a the, month. The, 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 the holiday party fell on a Wednesday. Yep. And when yep. they came out, there was, yeah, you're right, Dennis. It was like three and a half weeks. Yeah. He came it was, back like it was, January 13th. It, yeah, he came back middle of January. So and he is going to take off. the summer off. I am, I am now convinced. He is well, not going to do any summer. show. He's so insulated. June, July, and August. Criticism, the only criticism he <laughs> got was the, was the Callahan thing that got out there, which he clearly saw. But he's so insulated. He has, he has the celebrity ass kissers telling him how great his show is. He's not going to – and this notion that somehow him being uh, in quarantine in the Hamptons <laughs> in Florida is, is somehow hurting – the show what it was it's been horrible for a decade it's nothing to what do you with that. It, you can't turn shit into shit you know ten, <laughs> it's it's it, you if anything it might be better because you're getting some weird moments where beth is humiliating herself. There, there is no there is no yeah, actually it's just so as bad funny as it was if he was back so in funny? the studio you think it would be better no. no what's so funny though is that beefus has not been on the show now for two weeks how come like it had yeah. its like uh, yeah exactly yeah, how come it's been, you know, like it had its last embarrassing little appearance and now it's been gone and there's been no calls for beef. He has brought up the beef is, you know, an angel and a saint a couple of times since then. But honestly, it, it, it's the, the absence of beef has been and the absence of Fred this week. Fred did not make a fucking appearance. I did oh, not he, hear him. Yeah, he talked. To, uh, to, when? What's, what is it today? Today. Yeah, today yeah. he finally showed up. Because he, he wasn't there yesterday bit, at all. A little bit, but 
not long, just a, oh. like 30 seconds or so. Fred Howard did one of his, oh, you know, that's, you know, how he offhand insult to Fred, you know, like, <laughs> but that's what Fred's here for sort of thing. And then Fred goes, well, you know. Yeah, but whatever. I mean, yeah. he's supposed to be your sound effects guy and you're, you're one of your writers and the guy is AWOL for shows on end. Like, but we don't not, want him. No, no. I don't want to hear it. He well, I understand I, it, I but, but after two hours of just Robin and, and Howard, you want a third voice of any type. You, oh, you man, seriously, you're desperate for a third you're voice. Desperate. You're desperate <laughs> for anybody else to speak the, except for JD. With, with the, the face JD mask was, thing every day has been JD, atrocious this week. Him talking about people not JD, wearing masks. Fuck. JD killed an hour of the show today. JD. Yeah, uh, that I mean, was fucking seriously. atrocious. And that was kind of funny because they were really pushing how perverted JD is. Which well, I liked, well, he kept on kind of dig into his marriage. Um, yeah, he dug into that a couple times. That got kind of interesting. So, because uh, I haven't dove into that thread in a while, I'm wondering: is the tank? You know, are they still in the same uh, zip code? Yeah, <laughs> she's she's kind of fallen out of favor a little bit. I think, you know, ever since ever since she emailed me about her friends <laughs> being abused. Uh, <laughs> But due to you know our website, have you told this story because I haven't heard this. Oh well, I, I've told bits and pieces of it. Basically, yeah. she emailed me and said that she was really upset that upset. <clears throat> her friends were being you know called out on um, on the site, and she's like, you know, I, I put myself out there to be discussed and be talked about, but my friends didn't, and oh, you know, it's really not you at, like info cool at radio gunk. <laughs> Yeah, kind of. Uh, it's really not cool that, you know, my friends have to be subject to this. And, and I wrote back to her, I said, you know, you're incredibly naive if you think that, you know, we are the only source of, you know, you digging you into your, yeah, of course I did. That's and great. I said, you know, and I would advise you to read our terms of service. And you know, <laughs> and, like, and basically, I'm, on. I'm a substitute service. teacher, not a real teacher. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and I said to her, I was like, you know, you you have you have put yourself into this position, and um, and you just have to have you know a little dragon skin. That's all. And I will, I will curtail, you know, putting your friends' Instagrams up on there and everything like that because you know what they're they're not there to be subjects of 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 you know who she is and i get that and so i did she's, and it's her in the you pictures know, with them isn't it that's what she's upset about either way you know what it was just i know how i would feel if that happened to me and you know god knows i've been trolled a million times as you all know you know people tried to friend my friends on like linkedin and on on my twitter accounts and stuff like that and and i know what it's like for your friends to be a little harassed and well, you know it's no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but it comes a point, and so that's why she's taken herself off of all social media is because she doesn't want to yeah. be so, the um the poster child for our our tirades. I mean, you know, well, whatever. Just, I guess we, I guess becoming an influencer is really out of her realm now, huh? Yeah, it's pretty much done. Exactly. Should we segue? <laughs> should we segue with that into another person who isn't uh, probably isn't happy about the. The spotlight uh, being that being Howard's daughter. No, I think I think video. that crazy one likes the spotlight on herself because she got nothing <laughs> else going on. I mean, because honestly, that, her latest uh, upload a couple of days Oof, ago was uh, outstanding. A nearly wow. hour long podcast hour with long. her buddies, her followers, <laughs> and her leading guided fucking meditation, which I watched the whole <laughs> thing and edited the whole thing down to five and a half minutes for us to... And it, five and is, a half minutes. I kid you not. I don't know. Maybe we should just let it play because all you're going to do is laugh through it. It's absolutely fucking <laughs> hilarious. And, I, and it goof should... as we may, I'm, get, I'm betting this is more riveting and passionate than Howard's current show. This oh, is a delicious and segue. And I love the segue. And Did I you see how I went into that? Head. That was pretty sleek, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It was pretty mm. fucking good. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, my God. This is so obnoxious. The Zoom farmer works very up. hard, tilling their land, pruning their trees, <laughs> and trying to keep the insects from ruining their crops. The first ripe <laughs> fruit. 
And what joy floods their heart. They would like to taste the fruit or give it to their family, but they cannot. What the fuck is going on here? So this is her story, and this is why they are going to meditate now on on, on gratitude because it's the she, it's the, uh, the she's explaining it. But I'm I'm zooming in and out of that I main can, screen I onto their smell, faces. I can smell the people on this Zoom. I mean, it's, oh man, wait. <laughs> so damn. I'm zooming in and out on it, each it, different it person, like, and uh, you're gonna patchouli, laugh your ass off. Patchouli and this. sweat. So, so, so keep going. So, so, For the so, first so, ripe so. fruits belong oh. in gratitude. Oh, what happened? You think this, uh, you think you're going to try to kill which the Torah calls the harvest festival is the first time of the year we are able to make this offering, this Bikorim offering. <laughs> and upon finding a right... Who's that woman? I don't know. Was that a woman? A cord of <laughs> she was a rascal. Ah! Look at this. <laughs> set it aside oh, and say... This shall Elliot be often. Oh, often. <laughs> Look at so this. we are going to experience making a bikurim <laughs> offering in our own way today no, no, by locating no. the blessings in our lives. I invite you now to breathe. <laughs> of course. Oh my god. <laughs> Gratitude for the land is the foundation of this ritual. <laughs> The land oh is what God. makes it possible for the fruits to grow. Oh, what's going on here? <laughs> what's case, going on here? Look at this. The land of our bodies. Oh my God, and what is going on here? Look at this. Our lives. Oh. So I invite you now to get into a very comfortable position, either sitting up or even lying down. <laughs> Be very comfortable. She... So come wow. into awareness of your body and feel your body. Freaky. And forget all wow, your ideas about relaxed. your body. That it's this way or it's that way. Is that Bacol Nash? What is around you as endless space? Oh, this is the space Above section. you as endless space. I sped space. This up Below a bit. you is endless space. Space. Behind you space. is endless space. Behind, up. And to your left is space. To your right is right. space. And within you is space. Your oh my consciousness God. is yours. It is your land. <laughs> and the blessing of I you. I bet you private parts is on that into the show. vast landscape that is you. And you feel. I'm sorry. What the fuck <laughs> is this? What is she doing? Guided meditation. This is she's, guided she's, meditation. Uh, guiding she's, them. She's a super Jew, and she does guided meditation. Uh, she wants. I believe I've just been RSVP'd to breathe oxygen by Emily Stern. <laughs> you feel a little more spaciousness in your awareness scan through your sacred body once more in your mind and when you're ready unmute yourself <laughs> let's tie a reed around ourselves around our bodies with a hug and together we can say hugging. this shall be, shall be among the, the people green oh my god <laughs> and wrap yourself she does it for each say, one of this these. This shall be a mile. Shall be a mile. The Pico Reem. Ha. Ha. This shall be a mile. The Pico Reem. Put it alone. And this shall be a mile. It just keeps going. Will there be a Zuzazu tie in, so please? Much gratitude to all of you. This shall be the happening It is happening again. Wrap Twin ourselves, peaks. unmute ourselves. <laughs> this shall be a decorum. They say Jerusalem is the heart of Israel. She's got some twitches there. Never. She gets a oh, call. call. Every heart she's so bored. She's a call. <laughs> Sorry, I can't talk now. No, 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 Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, Emily's going on and on about this. I don't know what's going on. For your accompanied uh, into. I don't, I don't even know what to say to her anymore. <laughs> and now comes the part. Is that Croy? Where we bow before oh my God. God. <laughs> that one this the is right incredible. One is she lies funny. down. Watch this. So I am actually no. going to get on the floor and bow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look at this. Is she on lithium? Like, seriously. Oh, she has to be. 
It has the, to be large doses. Large the doses. beatific Serious. smile on her is like wow. actually frightening. She's fucking. She's on a mood this. enhancer called Trust Fund. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. She's... Oh it's my a serotonin God. uptake. The se the serotonin she, wow. Trust Fund. I, I edited this. She went down for quite a few minutes. <laughs> ah, so I too edited massive. It. Did I just see a Rachel Maddow sighting? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the 35-minute monologue? Uh, Russia, Russia, <laughs> Russia, Russia. Were people able to Mueller. locate some gratitudes in their life? But it was oh, wonderful. Here we go. I, I had so much gratitude flowing, flowing all over the place. Oh. It was flowing everywhere. Everywhere. Could she be trolling with daddy, me. says Dorian Morgan. <laughs> Andrew Morgan. It's really inspiring wife. for those of us who are getting out and about after you know being fully vaccinated so girl. and going out it's kind of scary but you know it's, it's like have hope yeah look at emily's face here monique oh yeah, my that. god oh. Jesus. Wow. Jesus. Feel like better I... the rest of your sessions and happy shavuot 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 Sh shavuot, shavuot. Yeah. shavuot. isn't that wow. fucking great I oh my god that's amazing she is a, she's she's a incredible. Gift. She is a gift. She is. Lay she... down on camera and just lay there for minutes. This, <laughs> she's a gift that I keeps giving. This is going to shoot yeah, right past is... Joe Rogan and Mark Maron's podcast for number one on iTunes. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I guarantee it. I wow. want her to better get than a Howard bigger... Show. Still better than Howard Show. I want her to Way get better. a bigger audience because she'll go even more crazy. You know, <laughs> it's, be... it's sort of like beef. We would bring attention to that, right? That, All right, she, well, we wow, are going to, <laughs> yeah, what, what we are going to uh, wrap up this show with yet another uh, promotional <laughs> event brought to oh. us by Bon Jovial. And I have to tell you that I think that this is, this is your, this is your epic moment. This is your Oscar worthy moment, Bon, because yeah. I don't really. Is Citizen Kane? <laughs> yeah, it is his rosebud. I don't think Rose that close. Very close. anything could convey uh, Beth as well as as this did. And um, so, yeah. So, okay, we interviewed, we reviewed uh, the blind item. We talked a little bit about some um, wig stuff. We are going to do an in depth uh, analysis of all the dirt that has you know that people are just mm -hmm. digging for shit all over the place i'm fairly positive every single one of them is a member on our forum and <clears throat> and so i think that the promotional materials that we're using for when beth promotes are probably going to be better than the show could ever possibly be yes. not gonna lie well, i said that, that. Anybody, anybody, anybody got mad at me but you know no i was doing my fake out it's a high thing, bar, it's a high it bar. Was totally not uh, let me tell you something i knew uh, i thought that was going to be brought up this is at the moment, we've got about 40 minutes for part one. So it's a massive podcast. I might trim it to 35. But I remember back when, um, if anyone ever watched the TV show Lost, which I was a huge fan of, when they were promoting series two of Lost, they were saying the first 90 seconds will blow your mind. And right. um, it really did, too, because I was Hello. a big fan. And you realize something so in the the start of season two. Oh, oh my god! You, I'm start, not ready so, you realize something at the start of season two of Lost that's just awesome in that first. It's it's like no, it's no. Can I give no away dialogue, the ending? It's visual. It's real. I'm not telling what's <laughs> happened. It's really beautiful. Like you just go, oh my god! It, it turns everything around. Um, and for anyone who's 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 sort of uh, saying, oh, Beefus promotes might not be the greatest thing I've ever seen. Maybe, maybe not. I'm saying it, it, just just within the first ninety seconds of Beefus promotes when we start it, you're going to be um, converted. I promise you. It's well because this is it's brilliant. not even about me. It's not even. It's her. She's fucking in editing all this. She's amazing, and I never want her to change. I absolutely love. Oh, her. don't worry. What she it does cannot change. is so it, it incredible for him. Can't. For the fact that he got together with a person like her has given us everything she's almost the center of this whole world now her, her she just what he has become she's a major her. conduit to what he's become without a doubt without a, i think she it's controls a lot hilarious. more than we know 
No. It's I, so it, funny to have him get together. Like, imagine if he'd stayed with Alison. She'd never call in now. None of that. It'd be a different show. With Beefus, it's like a, just a completely different fucking thing. And she, she's, everything she does is crazy. She can't do anything conventionally. She, she can't do interviews properly. She can't. She can't talk properly. Everything she no. does is just crazy. flail. It's so yeah. out there. She's just the fact that she just tries Everything to convince us that she never wanted to get married is unbelievable to me. It's like, oh, okay, God, well, a girl like her was wanting to get married when well, she was three years old, probably. Yeah. Okay. Well, with that, with that with said, that, uh, we're going to give you. Yeah, that was nice. We're going to give you when Beefus promotes. We are going to end the show with this. It's phenomenal. And so this is the just, final trailer. So we're Memorial the final Day. Trailer. I hope exactly. you're all here in the chat, if you're you know there and listening. And if you can, watch it on a big screen TV uh, on a, on a um, yeah. uh, tablet or something because it's, it's very visual and it's going to be. Uh, well, the wording to this is just phenomenal. So um, good night to all of our friends. We are going to leave you with this. It is perfection. I just want you to know that, Bon. I Thank think you, you went above it. and uh, beyond on the on this, on this clip. All right, here we go. So deliciously low. So horribly dirty. I'll make a duchess of this draggletail gutter snipe. Start today. Now, this moment. Take her away and clean her. Sandpaper if you won't come off any other way. Take all her clothes off and burn them and ring up and order some new ones. You've got none of your slum prudery here, young woman. You can't walk over everybody like this. I had no intention of walking over anybody. I merely suggested we should be kind to this poor girl. You can't take a girl up like that as, as if you were picking up a pebble on the beach. Why not? But you don't know anything about her. She may be married. Gone. There, as the girl very properly says, gone. Old marry me. By George, the streets will be strewn with the bodies of men shooting themselves for your sake before I've done with you. Nobody wants her. She's no use to anybody but me, so take her upstairs. But what's to become of her? Is she to be paid anything? What you do with money, she'll have her food and her clothes. Only drink if you give her money. Does it occur to you the girl has some feeling? Oh, no, I don't think so. No feelings need worry about. What's to become of her when you've finished your teaching? What's to become of her if we leave her in the gutter? Answer me that, Mrs. Pierce. That's her own business, not yours. But well, when I've done with her, we'll throw her back in the gutter and then it'll be her own business again. So that'll be all right, won't it? You don't care for nothing but yourself. If you're good and do whatever you're told, you should sleep in a proper bedroom, have lots to eat, and money to buy chocolates and take rides in taxis. If you refuse this offer, you will be the most wicked girl and the angels will weep for you. I'll make a queen of that barbarous wreck. 